the football talk show that holds back nothing on opinions. Straight shooting LJA. I am Johnson. Grassroots coach Manisha Taylor. Hello, I'm Rob Ress. The G Man. Samir Shawnee of Motivate Sports and Fitness. Christian Carambu. Matt Hodgson, director of the four year plan. We the people, for the people. Jazzy Fizzle. Your Monday, Monday night, night football and fix. Make sure you join the revolution. The pitch is where we eat, the pitch is where we sleep, and the pitch is where we talk. Each and every Monday night of your lives at youtube.com forward slash pitch talk. For podcast links and information, check out our official website www.pitch talk.com. Hello, I'm Rob Perez. Chris Coach, Manisha Taylor. Chris Sankey. I'm Matt Hodgson, Director of the Four Year Plan. David Gocklin. I'm Rob Lusher. Andy Copeland from the Glennet Southern Amateur League. Hello, Brick. I'm CEO of 14. Former Chairman of Ibis FC. Chairman of Alexandra Park FC. And you're listening. You are listening. You're listening. And you're listening to Pitch Talk. The only place to get your Monday night footballing fix. Because the pitch is where we eat. The pitch is where we sleep. And the pitch is where we talk. Make sure you join the revolution, the football revolution. Hi, I'm John Sitton and I'm here with Gavin, Liam and Gerald on Pitch Talk. The football talk show that pulls no punches and holds back nothing on opinions. Hello, I'm Rob Perez. My name is Christian Carambu. I'm grassroots coach Manisha Taylor. Hi, I'm Matt Hodgson, director of the four-year plan. And you're listening to Pitch Talk, the only place to get your Monday night footballing fix. Make sure you join the revolution. The pitch is where we eat, the pitch is where we sleep. And the pitch is where we talk. I'm Andy Copeland from the Glennet Southern Amateur League. Philip Quick, I'm CEO of 14. I'm Rob Lusher, former chairman of Ibis FC. Hey, I'm Samir Sawney, co founder and co director of Motivate Sports and Fitness. And you're listening, you are listening, you're listening, and you're listening to Pitch Talk. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, straight shooting LJ, the G Man, and Jesse Fizzle proudly bring to you the football talk show that pulls no punches and holds back nothing on opinions and we got two special guests in the house tonight we're going to introduce you to them in a second hello to everyone by the way but you know what we are your monday night football and fix why because the pitch is where we eat the pitch is where we sleep and the pitch is where we talk. <laughs> not that again not that again oh my god you know what it is monday october 6th 2014 and as you can see on the youtube feed we got two special guests we got mr vernon grant and john sitting here as well so one of them was we're gonna ask the guys some questions in a second but let us tell you where to find us first ladies ladies and gentlemen you can find us www.pitch-talk.com is the official website where you can find all things pitch talk i think actually including that mixler link to hear the first hour of our show in audio only as well but we are live right now on youtube for the next three hours of your monday night you know what? Facebook.com forward slash pitch talk. Become a fan, become a friend, become a member of the group. Join the footballing revolution. We are working so hard to create. MySpace.com forward slash pitch talk. Pitch talk.blogspot.com. All.co.uk will get you to the blogs, including blogs by yours truly, Straight Shooting LJ, the G Man, Jesse Fizzle, and many, many more, including Russ Vernon, Mike Carneman, Big T, aka Thomas Hewitt. Dave May, aka Mercy, and many, many more. YouTube.com forward slash Pitch Talk for all the latest videos, including the Pitch Talk Meet series, which includes one of the men sitting in this studio today, Mr. John Sitterman featured. Also, the Pitch Talk on the Road series, our cup finals, cup final videos as well, and much, much more too. Also, Twitter.com forward slash Pitch Talk or at Pitch Talk on Twitter. Tweet with us, follow us, see what we're up to. What's that in my hand? I say, I see, I say, I see a mobile phone. 07535 is the mobile number. Call us, text us, let us know your views. And we are Pitch Talk 1 on Skype. Add us, 
Join the party. Join the party. You know what? I would like to first say a big hello to Jersey Fizzle, the G-Man, my usual co-host. Give him a wave on the YouTube, please, please. We have some decorum. Bit of a royal wave. <laughs> royal wave, even though I'm not really that much of a fan of the Queen, but still. But I would also like to say a big hello. We've been promoting it for a while. <laughs> Mr. Vernon Grant, the ghost writer of John Sitton's book. <clears throat> and you know, you know, which, which, one, which one of you wants to jump on first? Step, step, yeah, step yeah, forward. Yeah, we said hello to you. No, just hello, everyone. Good evening. After the world's longest introduction. <laughs> I've, come out, I've only come out to do a bit of shopping, get a loaf of bread, and I've ended up in here. You know what I mean? I've had to make my own tea. What's going on? I can't believe <laughs> I thought I wanted to be all good about, I'd have stayed at home. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. John, how you doing, man? Good to see you. How goes good it, man? It's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's still as hot in here as it was last time. No? I, 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 I want to come in my front next time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> don't, don't tempt me. Woo! Just play the Chippendales music. No, the full Monty music. Yeah. Play the full Monty music. We, look at Jesse's already like, oh, God. He no. wants to jump in. He wants to, he wants in to Jesus face palm me. Yeah. Like, oh. He's a ringer. He's Chris Rock with dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a ringer with Chris. Ring <laughs> <laughs> I saw it out. It looks like Chris Rock, this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. I don't know how you got the front of where that Liverpool shirt. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. See, look, John, John's got a much better looking like for me than what any of what you have. It it's used right, to be, right, right, be right, Lukaku. Right. It used to be Romelu oh. Lukaku until Lukaku had a haircut. Then it was back for Tembi Gomis more recently. Oh, come on. We've got a Ramirez looking like in the Sky Chat, who's Jamie Jamie K. Bailey. Well, well, you know what? It's tremendous. Just because, right, John and Van here, I'm going to unveil your brand new looking like It's going to stay with you for the rest of the year. Well, right? Gav's got Sean Gota, so where are you going with me? Charles and Zogby. I don't, that's not new. That's not new as a lookalike. Chris Hutchinson. He's been saying that for a while that I'm a ringer for, for Charles Insomnia. Charlie Insomnia, <laughs> I should call him. Joking, well, they've got slaughter for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. As a, as, yeah, that's as, clever. It's, it's, that's it's, it's like Charlie Insomnia. Yeah. It's like, oh, God, no, he didn't. It was like, no, he didn't. Oh, it was, it was, I, I found it hilarious. What year is that shirt from, by the way? This is the 2010-2011, when um, when the parody, not not necessarily the parody, but the protest shirt and um, the black one with standards corrupted was oh, released. Right. I think it was the Spirit of Shankly group who yeah. actually who actually released that, trying to get Sounds Gillette, too profound trying, for trying, trying to get Gillette and Hicks out, yeah. so, or get into it. Or and it's too profound for football. <laughs> too profound for Liverpool. <laughs> what? <laughs> We'll get into it. We'll get it's into starting that. early. Uh, yeah, it's starting early. Of course, of course. But it always, it always yeah. starts. It always well, starts. We're at fifth from bottom. <laughs> well, hey, we know that. We know that, man. Uh, but Vernon, how, yes, how, 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 how goes it, man? Yeah, all right. You're, you're no, I spent all day. I've spent all day with Sits. Um, we've been out doing a photo shoot for the book, uh, which is in the rain, which has been fun. Ooh. He's been freezing parts of his anatomy off that he didn't want to freeze off. Shoot, um, shooting in the rain rather than singing in the rain. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so we've had some good photos taken of him in his cab, and we've been back to Orient and had some photos taken there. Although we didn't announce our arrival, obviously. <laughs> um, so no, it's all going well. And tomorrow, um, one, um, sort of looking forward to our meeting with the lawyer, read the book. So me and John with the lawyer, seeing what we can and cannot get away with <laughs> from the final text of the book. This is what I don't understand. This is, I don't understand that you can't get away. If it happened, if it's a fact, if it's like near enough word for word description, right? And I've I've remembered it, I've diarised it, I've stated it. I don't understand why it is you can't put it in the book. Word of the law in England um, or in Britain. That's, yeah, that's but if, it, if it, listen, I was, showing, I was showing up through editing, I was showing up to be like a uh, some sort of Neanderthal Muppet fuck, when really and truly all you're trying to do is get a, after like eight, nine, ten months of um, what you might call top draw, top draw information, good work, et cetera, et cetera. Then, all right, I've descended into, descended into, uh, into me, uh, you know, getting emotional, shall we say, right, <laughs> to try and get a reaction. And uh, it, compared to what I was, some of the training regimes I went through, 
you know, I, th I think I should be entitled to, to, uh, to voice my opinion and put it in the book and, and let people know how it was then. And, and to a degree, to an extent, how it still is now. That's why the game's... That's why England come home bottom of the group. Can I just say, I mean, we'll get into a few more issues. I've been in and around football since what the mid seventies professionally, and I have to say, I didn't think, I didn't think I, there was anything I didn't know or could learn about football from uh, you know reading a ex footballer's book or whatever. But in this instance, I have. You know, my jaw has dropped, especially around things like money figures, uh, what people were being paid in the game then, twenty years ago. Um, all that sort of thing. So I've, I've discovered things I didn't know, and I thought I knew everything there was to know. So if it's telling me something, it's certainly going to tell other people. So yeah, well, what's, the, what's the name? Of, what's the name of the book? The Rims. Rims. We've gone. We've gone for the. I mean, the, 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 like the tag. I don't know what you called it anyway, but it's something to get people's attention with regards to it in relation to the uh, well, Twitter the, handle. The few thousand asset, whatever you call the it. I'm, I'm not. Listen, I'm not cool on it. You know, is where I'm going in London. I'm a black cab driver now. I don't need to be computer literate. You're the media <laughs> man. You know, what I mean, I've done. A, I'll only pay attention to what I need to pay attention to if I need to understand it. I'll learn it. I'll master it, and th and then we move on. Do you know what I mean? But if I don't need it in my life. I'm at an age now. I'm thinking, well, you know, drop it. But he says you've got to relate to the Twitter because the Twitter following and the feedback is fantastic. Yeah. It's made, been magnificent. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, I'll be honest with you. I'm going to say it. I'm going to, in terms of the hits on YouTube and in terms of what I did for Lake Norrington and their support. So three and a half k there. You're looking at nearly hundred thousand hits on on um, YouTube. on YouTube on the different like the four or five different interviews. And then, like the uh, the few thousand followers I've got, all I'd say was I, I think it's a shame that the that the the book sales thus far, the pre order doesn't doesn't reflect that those numbers. You know, we need to get the numbers up. Um, get pre order in. Yeah, the exactly, exactly. Now, nah, <laughs> but, but the, it's called the real sits and, the, and the two the two dots. I think that's a full the colon, colon yeah. right? A little knowledge is a dangerous thing because what I want to try and do as well is relate to cab drivers mm -hmm. and, and 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 to show you, you know. You're not a numpty because if you did the version of the knowledge that I did, uh, ironically, it's probably the Yanks and the Europeans that appreciate you more than your own. You know what I mean? They're, yeah, they're like, well, this is this ain't a degree. This is like tantamount or comparable to a PhD. So you know, at the time, even if I was just proving it to myself, um, the, the fact that you, you're a little bit more, your your cat will be more cerebral than than was uh, edited and shown on Channel Four all say, those yeah, years exactly ago. Exactly that. It's, it's no, also yeah. the real sits, not just this John's. Twitter handle is the real six, but because 20 years on, this will finally tell the real six, as opposed to there are a, a litany, an army of people out there, who, especially on YouTube, who love to watch that original documentary from Channel 4, who think they know yeah. John Sitton. Yeah. Uh, and believe me, having ghost written this book and then taken a long time to do it, and uh, they don't. Um, I now do, but they don't. So it's set in the record straight. You know, and I think he's entitled to uh, put his side of the story. Yeah, you got. I got, just wanted to redress the balance, really. No, of course. You know, that's all. That's all. What it was about. I'm not really. You know, if you get in, if you get in my in my cab, and and I ask you, like I ask everybody at the start of the journey, what have you got a preferred route? Mm -hmm. and, and they say, well, no, I'm, okay, re relax, leave it to me, yeah. because it's what I've trained for. You As you said right? on our pitch talk meets, right? Like, so, yeah. so it's the same sort of thing with regards to people don't know. The background or the circumstances beyond which um, I was actually sort of portrayed or painted in. So I want people to know and understand what is actually what's gone on behind uh, the run up to, uh, in, in effect, what what ended my career. I know that. Fair point. I know that. No, totally, totally, totally. That's not the name of that book again. The Real Six, A Little Knowledge is a Dangerous Thing. Yeah. Right, that title, people, pre-order it. Where can we pre-order that, by the way? www.vgtips.co.uk. Hear that, people, also. www.vgtips, as in PG Tips, only with a V, .co.uk. Remember that piece, vgtips.co.uk. Also, you can get your horse racing betting tips and also your football betting tips at vgtips.co.uk as well. So, a bit ironic because yeah. a lot of what's in the book is about <laughs> is about my uh, my uh, the goings on with gambling in, in my family and the people around me. And um, yeah, yeah lots of your, lots of your family going back were into. Having a bet on football, yeah, horse racing, heavily yeah. ironic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was, gonna, I was gonna say, Where's Klaus Lundek born when you knew them? 
<laughs> him, talking, him talking about spot fixing recently. Um, but well, now we've had some other managed to offer. Football season's been good this far. I mean, I think the one thing we know, what well, all punters know, the last couple of seasons, three seasons, is football is much more. Um, uh, unpredictable than it used to be yeah. when it comes to betting. The only uh, thing, for sure, the only thing for sure is nothing's for sure. I yeah, could have yeah. sworn I said that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, much more so the last two, three seasons. Mm. Um, but we've still, you know, managed to come up. I still managed to come up with a winning accumulator every now and then and some single bets. Odds against wins like we had this weekend. I'm sitting there with a writer or John McCrew. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to look it, yeah. I love it. I love it. You know what? Before we move on, Jersey G man, how goes it, guys? Not too bad. You know, uh, what? Well, I mean, yeah. I have to say, I'm, I'm honoured to be here. I'm honoured to be here every Monday night. But you know, <laughs> you're damn right, you are. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just say? That's why I'm just reiterating your point. Believe you me. That's sorry. There's Chris the, Rockwood. That's, that's, that's the word. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no. I think. Um, have a Vernon and Johnny in the studio live. As I say, it's, it's a great honor. So thank you for being here. And um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the show because yeah. you know everything yeah. pre-show was absolutely hilarious. Oh my! Goodness. So if the pre-show was anything like anything that's going to happen over the next, you know, two and a bit hours, yeah, then you're in for a treat, people. That's all I'm saying. Well, you know what? Yeah, we got we got Mike Harneman, Tom Wood, Jamie Bailey, Russ Vernon, a couple more as well. Mm. So let's, without further ado, good. Pause the track that we are on because it is time to swing into the first segment of the show, which of course the regulars will know as quite a bit of. <laughs> analysis and where we're going to start is is actually tuesday yeah why are you back on tuesday first because we September. actually covered stoke one newcastle in your life yeah we covered that last week and the victim <laughs> you covered it last week the victor moses deal <laughs> victor moses and Javino with the hairlines that go back further than nintendo's history in gaming it's an original line. Like <laughs> ah, yeah. You thought about that? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this scripted ad libs. I love it. <laughs> but you know, on Tuesday, 30th of September 2014, we're going to start in Group E of the Champions League. CSKA nil, Bayern Munich one. Thomas Müller getting the only goal of the game on 22 minutes from the penalty spot. Man City won, Roma won. Uh, Sergio Aguero scoring a fourth minute penalty. And the man who Man City had the nerve to mock on Twitter. That guy being totty, being that guy, and him being that guy, about being that guy, and being about being that guy, ended up scoring on 23 minutes to make it one each, and that's how it stayed. Can you say that again? Well, how totty is that guy, and he tried to be that guy, and he was all about being that guy, and he ended up being that guy who scored to make it one and he is the man. I'm just going for confusion. By the way, this could be like reverse psychology if they want to use it but me personally i think man city are out i don't think really? it, i don't think really? it, well when you say already the damage is done one point from six isn't it well the damage is done then isn't it? i mean they've got they've got they need a, like one of these win accumulators <laughs> <laughs> they've got to go bang 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 you know what i mean and i don't think it'll happen i don't think it'll happen i think me personally i think they're out yeah. i think liverpool will go out I think we need to pick up if we don't if we don't pick up if we don't pick up hold on Trump, before you really up. interrupted me what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I think Arsenal will finish second I think Chelsea are top of the group uh, that's my prediction well, Chelsea have got quite an easy See, so no, well, it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter. You well, still got to beat what's put in front of you. Yeah, so don't get temperamental just because, <laughs> you know, just because you won't qualify. I mean, this, hey, you, hey, you won't hey, be able to end all the games. Hey. Louis's gone. Hey, Louis's Louis gone. He's biting. Sure he's, sure. he's, sure. he's biting Spaniards now. So. <laughs> 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 Uh, and metaphorically, you got Fabregas biting Arsenal. G man, don't laugh too much yet. We're getting to your result later. <laughs> <laughs> no, no matter how bad things are, there's always something else funny going on. Yeah, See, but for now, sure. 
now I feel like asking for a VG tip. Yes. What I did there. Tell me. And my VG tip is what would be the odds, right? On all of what John's saying. Oh, well, you'd have to go online to find out what they were. Yeah. Uh, uh, that means he can't be... think of an answer. <laughs> 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 but you were bloody good the other season. You, go on. you with things like that, you, you made predictions yeah, mate, a couple that, of years ago when we did. Yeah, and you know the irony? I don't gamble. Because no. I've seen the damage yeah, it's done yeah, in my yeah, family, yeah, right? Yeah, but yeah. I went, boom, this is your last eight, boom, this is your last four, boom, this is your final. And. And, and I went, uh, not last year, not season this last before. year, but the season before as well, with my German boys. Yeah. Mm. See, you hear it, you're hearing that? It's one of them. Six is the man for predictions. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. get in his cab. But, but if anyway. you do lose money, sorry, Chris, but if you do <laughs> lose money, <laughs> but if you do lose money, go ahead. If you do, don't blame me. Don't blame me. Because well, in said, Canada. Yeah, there's, more, there's more variables in football than any other sport. I've said that before. So so right, there's more people. Yeah. That's no why variable. I don't bet on football. There's too many variables. Yeah. That's good. It's, it's, you like that? I like that word. Yeah. Variable. It's one of them ones. Right. Which Man City player Which Man City player was it that criticised the turnout? I can't remember. That game. One or two of them. 37,000, was it? Yeah, yeah I think so. 37. So that's for that stadium. 50 quid. 50 yeah. quid. Yeah. But, all, but also, what it proves is that Man City are so, a rich team rather than a big team. So we're now we've got ridiculously right. wealthy players criticising the fans for not turning up. Yeah, so which, is, which is which is in there. Okay. Which is not which is not even an irony; it's a hypocrisy. Oh, right. A rich team is a consequence of the chairman, or is a consequence of the ticket prices? Chairman. Right. Well, it's the same at Chelsea, but Chelsea went bump thirty-five quid across the board. Yeah. That's why it was a full house. Right. So, I mean, even that would better support. Not that I want to start trouble or stir up any. Hey, hey, hey! I'm going to say you can pack out a house with three tickets, Gerald. There's an OWR right. They used to give away their tickets. And didn't they give away tickets to Hog Wild as well? Yeah, they because they did it in Sturgis. Yeah, they did it outdoors, so you can't charge for an outdoor event unless you ring fence it. And so you, you, what you're doing now, you're doing UEFA Champions League a week old. Yeah, <laughs> look, at, look at he's gonna he's gonna pick holes in it. Wait, before six picks holes in it, yeah, let's go through know. Apwell Nicosia one, Ajax one, Anderson open and score for Ajax. Um, on 28 minutes with Manduka equalising on 32 minutes. Some would say uh, this was match of the night, and I think it pretty much was. Now, Paris listen, Saint-Germain three. Let me interrupt you there. Because, <laughs> but no, for the, it on. no, for the simple reason. Do you want a permanent host? For the simple <laughs> reason, right? For the simple reason, if you remember, mm -hmm. right, the press conference yeah. involving Howard Wilkinson, mm -hmm. right, one of the biggest thugs ever to take a football field, mm -hmm. right, even though he was an England international. Mm -hmm. And it, if you weren't a good athlete, it, it wouldn't have got in a pub team. <laughs> and Greg Dyke, right? So Danny yeah. Mills, Greg Dyke, and, that, and he says, if we're not careful, right, you know, with their master plan, yeah. we're going to end up like Cyprus, 150 cents. And who's there drawing 1 1 with Ajax? Abwell Nicosia. Yeah. yeah, Abwell is pronounced. <laughs> My missus is a bubble, it's pronounced Abwell. Abwell. The, P, ah. the P is pronounced like a B. So you said, ah, well, well. see, John was saying off air, you learn something new every day. Yeah, just yeah. And Nicosia is left Corsia, left Corsia, Abuel left Corsia, right? Just, just you know, I'm going to keep playing now. Now, keep playing now, playing now, now you're glad I interrupted you. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of knowledge, it's a dangerous thing, of course, of course, of course. Of course. Of course. Um. Right, let's go. Paris Saint Germain three, Barcelona yeah. two. David Luiz opening scoring on ten minutes. Lionel Messi, nice goal. Um, equalising on eleven minutes. Verratti scoring on twenty six minutes. Blaise Matuidi scoring on fifty four minutes. And Neymar scoring on fifty six. Thoughts, um, thoughts from the floor? Uh, I did not only come out for a cheesecake. Barcelona, <laughs> Barcelona were even. Best price to win that. Paris Saint Germain were odds against. Um, I was surprised Paris Saint-Germain won without Slatan in the team. Mm. And of course, Slatan was desperate to play due yes. to his less than happy period at Barcelona. Um, it was a it was a really good game to watch and very eventful. Um, if David Luiz can score against you, then he might need to worry. But <laughs> prior to that game, prior to that game, Barca hadn't conceded a goal. Yeah, he might have got on one of his runs for. Gonna say Luis, like the Luis, Luis, Luis yeah. the liability. What's that? Let me just see the Schalke. See the Schalke. Yeah, let's go into that. Yeah, so, Schalke, Schalke. so their result against Chelsea was what? It was one one, wasn't it? Right. So, so I'm re the reason I'm raising the issue is: Do you not think they would be disappointed to draw yes. one one at yes. home yes. to uh, MK Maribor? 
Haribo. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, let's go, let's go into Anti. Salka won, NK Haribo, sorry, Maribo won. Um, Boha opened the score on 37 minutes with Klaus John Hunter scoring on 56 minutes. The other result in that group, which is Group G, Sport in Lisbon, nil, Chelsea won. Emmanuel Matic on 34 minutes with a fantastic header, it must be said, um, scoring on 34 minutes. Not and, a clean shoot, was it? And you know what? Yeah, no, it was. No, it was. And you, you know what? You know what? The, the, thing, the thing with this game, it could have been more. Oh, if yeah. it wasn't for Rui, Rui Patricio having the game of his life, Who is he? it must be said, he was fantastic. Who is he? Rui Patricio, the Portuguese. Good. Fantastic game. Played out of his skin, must, yeah? Must be said, yeah. Because I missed it, I was working. S save after save after save. Yeah, Oscar, Oscar could have put it out of sight at one point. It was well, there. Was but that's the best scoreline in football, especially away from home. Yeah. one nil is just like, what? there's like three, I've got three little theories. You've got one nil, like your one nil is just like beautiful, professional, job done. Yeah. You've nicked to go, don't matter yeah. when. And the away goals. Right. Yeah, yeah, but... I'm just saying, pure anything. Premier, Premier League, the lot, the full Monty, the Football League. You've kept a lovely, clean sheet. Yeah. Now your two nil, your two nil is like what you might call um, not emphatic. Three nils emphatic, right? I'll come back so to then, you. Two. So then four nils orgasmic. Then. Well, based on the you, I mean, let's not go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 Downward. So okay. one nil, one nil's nice and professional, mm -hmm. right? Three nil is. Like emphatic, two nil is just yeah. That's nice. That's just what you might call <coughs> competent and a, and a beautiful scoreline. So they're they're the free, but that one nil away from home in Europe is funny because it moves so fast. And friendly, Our very little credit was given for that. And for any Leeds fans listening, six nil at Hillsborough last season. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a we beautiful. had fun. another Ella, another muppet, right? You got fun. you got listen. You got luck. Listen, at least you're, like, you're Arsenal, right? Yeah. You, I don't know you. Oh, here we go. Here you're what? I'm United. United. Man United. Man United. Man no United. Sheffield United. I know. <laughs> this is embarrassing. <laughs> this is embarrassing. So you come from that well-known Manchester suburb and not in your day, right? You've got a Liverpool supporter. You've got the geezer here from Shepherd's Bush and he supports Sheffield Wednesday, yeah? Another another Yorkshire, another suburb of Yorkshire. Right? You know, the, the, the Yorkshire suburb of uh, Shepherd's Bush. Hey, it's, it's, hey, it's a world game. Hey, let's, say, let's put this a world game, it's but what you do, game. but when it comes to your local community, this is what I'm saying. This is what's wrong. You're all glory hunters. You're no, glory. but when, I mean, not Vernon. I mean, they're, they're <laughs> <laughs> they haven't won anything since 1854. Right? 1991, no. <laughs> 1 0 against Manchester. <laughs> I was going to say, when you move around a lot as a kid, it's hard to say you've got a local this team is. when your local team changes. Yeah, but what, why did you end up with Liverpool? Did you get bullied or what? what, what? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? no I we, we tell this story on, on yeah. the Meet the Team videos, but the fact is, I got into football in 94, I was eight. And it was one and it was one that was late compared to everyone else who I met subsequently. Yeah. But it was one that was, oh, like the football, new, new crap from Apple Butter, in the words of Jim Cornette. New crap from Apple Butter about football. I just picked the first team that I like playing style of. It was that, yeah. I like them. Liverpool. Just so happened to be Liverpool. Liverpool. What was they doing at the time? Was they winning anything? Or um, I found I found out about a year or two later that we'd won the Coca Cola Cup in '93. Yeah. yeah, and I knew I pretty much knew bugger all about Sorry. it for about two years. Yeah, <laughs> so it was just a plain stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? So it, was, it, it was it was no, '94. I mean '94. Yeah. And very, I've never checked. I've never changed. And you was eight. Yeah, yeah. Ninety four. I was just I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown, personally. But like, you know, flipping me lid in the dressing room. So well, I, we did. You was did, a baby. You we was did cover. We did cover that in the pitch talk. Me, it's pitch talk. Yeah. Me, John sitting is on YouTube.com forward slash pitch talk. That's you good. ain't checked it out. We got the Orient Club for a final chapter. The only reason where this, John sets it straight. The only reason this West London boy didn't support Chelsea. Oh, here we go. Here we, we go. Go and watch him play. Here we go. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Every kid at school supports Chelsea, <laughs> so I just wanted to be a rebel. Don't start me off. Uh, there you, go. you know what? You know what? Yeah. Well, um, we want to come back to one of the Skypers, actually. Yeah. Mike, Mike Harneman, are you with us? Where are you, Mike? Talk to me. Let's be having ya. Peace. Good evening. How you doing? Yeah, all good, man. Well, all good. How can it? It's coming through loud and clear. That's, that's how we do it, yeah. man. That's how we, that's how we do it. The, word, the words of JB Smooth. Mike, Mike Hardiman, he supports Arsenal and Stevens. Hello, Mike. Arsenal and Stevens. Nice to hear from you. How are you doing? You all right? <laughs> 
Yeah, not bad. Yeah, yeah. Good man. Mike, you had a question for Sits and um, Vernon as well. More likely for Sits. Yeah, mostly for Sits to be honest. It's oh, that's based nice, on yeah. um, Vernon. That mean? No, 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 no. Forget me. No, Based no, no. on Phil Wallace, who is now with Steam as chairman. Ah, yes. Phil Wallace. So yeah. I've got quite one on this. Yes. And I, remember, was... I remember Phil very well. He's yeah. in the book. He's in the book, okay. Yeah. Um, so what actually, I'm reading a little bit about what happened here um, on one of these blogging websites. Um, Reputable and it's basically saying that there's some money issues or something. I don't, I, don't know what's, I, don't know, I don't know what to get into with this and what not to get into with it. But I just want to find out a bit more about what he was like in those kind of days. Well, if, you, if, you can get, if you can encapsulate that quickly, then yeah, then we'll have, uh, it's more in the book. Of well, when you listen, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. Uh, first of all, you should be afraid to ask whatever you want to ask. You shouldn't be uh, at all reticent about voicing an opinion. Um, Not what I would say. It? What I would say is this. You, you know, we, we, I mean, uh, sources in terms of sources, blogging sites, etc. I don't know. They're not not normally the most reliable of sorties, and it might be someone who's co- who's got a personal what they might call what you might call a personal grievance against whoever they're talking about. Mm. Having said that, um, you like the, the next thing I would say when it comes to you mentioned money issues, then that's obviously a very that's a broad canvas, right? Now where Phil was concerned, um, it was uh, fant- I found him fantastic and very very easy to relate to. It was very very. Um, it was a self-made, what, what appeared to me, my assumption or the conclusions I draw, it was a self-made man who'd done well for himself. And it, he'd heard about the opportunity to buy Lake Norin. He came in. Um, it, it was uh, very, very good with all the staff. Chris Turner and myself could relate to him very, very easily. He was very complimentary in terms of, uh, he said, well, obviously, I know, he said, you're an East End boy, so... By definition, that should make you a good communicator, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was full of, uh, of praise at, uh, watching the, some of the training or the coaching that I was putting on. He saw Chris more as the uh, what you might call the corporate face of the club. Um, money issues in terms of what you may or may not be asking or, re- or, 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 or the, the question you're trying to ask is um, he couldn't make the figures stack up. And and what I what I deduce from that is he forensic, very forensic, very uh, what you might call cold calculated business decision uh, based on what he saw and he just said I wanted to give it a go, I wanted to come in, I wanted to have a crack at it, he said but I just can't get the figures to stack up, those were more or less, I'm paraphrasing obviously because it was a long time ago but more or less his exact words and and, he, and we shook hands and he, and he rode off into the sunset so you can't blame the man for, he tried and, and he, couldn't, he couldn't get the figures to work because of the money that the club was hemorrhaging but I've got a lot of time for Phil Wallace then and a lot of time for what he's achieved since. I think in this age of this ridiculous fit and proper person test that <laughs> is neither fit nor job. proper most of the time, <laughs> in fairness, I think Phil Wallace uh, in this day and age would, would pass. Flying colours. With flying, flying colours. Don't um, worry about if, that. If there were more men, honourable men like him yeah. <laughs> in football, yeah. who went through the books with a fine tooth coat before coming in and saying that's a good word i'm going to spend 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 and smash the cash and you can shop at harrods rather than prime up and all that nonsense yeah um, if there were more men like phil wallace in football um things would be yeah it's been a much better state oh great that's a good word for him honorable that's a, what I, that's exactly what i one of one of the big words i'd use to describe him he was very honorable and you can't say that about quite everyone the future. no that's right that's right so yeah. don't worry about steve you'll be all right yeah you will yeah. mike answer your question yeah, um, it, it does really, to be honest. And there we go. Kind of, I was just wondering, um, just a little bit more, like of what you were saying as well. I don't know if that would go back into the fact he went with Westy for a third time, a third term as well. Whether it's like on that kind of road where he's kind of gone back with someone who, someone who he thinks he can trust a lot more than spending out big money on getting a new manager in. Well, I rang him up and asked him for a job. I'll be honest with you. When I came out, I was desperate to get back in for fourteen months. And he let me down lightly, and uh, because obviously my me, me reputation was shot to Smith Rents uh, because of the editing um, uh, on, on the documentary. And what he said to me, uh, I, I can sympathise with that, and, and I can relate to it, and I'm, I fully concur. He said, "Look, I'm comfortable with the people I've got around me at the moment." And, and if that if that was the case, then that's fine by me. Uh, but he, uh, to his credit, bless him, he let me down. He let me down at the time. He let me down lightly. And if he's got that kind of working relationship uh, uh, with the guy, 
um, and they've had like three dabbles at it, you know what I mean, in terms of trying to achieve something. And, and most of it, from what I look at it from a distance, looking from a distance, they've been quite successful. And what you've got to bear in mind is that they've also got to spin these pl- all these plates whereby it's got to be cost effective as well. You can't you can't go doing what Orient did then and what they're what they're what they're heading towards now. You know what I mean? Having overpaid underachievers with no resale value. You can't do that. So they've they've got to get their money's worth. And and if it means a little blip every now and again, then so be it. But in the meantime, if he's got a good working relationship with his manager, um, then I'll say, you know, Godspeed, you, you crack on. You know what? Speaking of cracking on, yes. we got to crack on yes. with some of the show. Thank you for answering those questions, by the way. And I'm sure Mike, I'm sure Mike says thank you as well. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he he does. says cheers, sits. Um, we're gonna go to UEFA Champions League Group H, Balte Borisov two, Athletic Bill Bow. One. I like that because it winds Gerald up every time I say Bill Bow, because of what happened to his side a couple of seasons ago. But 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 um <laughs> Polyakov scored on 19 minutes. Karnitsky scored on 41 minutes. And Adrui scored on 45 minutes. Shakhtar, the next two FC Porto two Russian teams, Ukrainian teams, that kind of area of the world we're going to be going to later in the show. Um, but um, Tichera opened the score on 52 minutes for Shakhtar. Luis Adriano scored on 85 minutes. But Javi Martinez scored on 89 and 93 minutes. I think there was, there was one of them goals in that match that was just comedy, absolute comedy in terms of errors. And errors. But shifting on to Wednesday, October 1st, 2014, the beginning of Black History Month, it must be said. Um, Atletico Madrid won Juventus nil. Alda Turan with the only goal of the game on 74 minutes. So no celebration from Tevez. All that, all that crap. Yeah. I, I love that celebration. I thought that, I thought that was funny. Um, but Malmo to Olympiakos nil. Um, Rosenborg scored. Uh, sorry, Rosenberg scored twice. He opened the score on forty-two minutes. Scored on eighty-two minutes. Hmm. Well, you're talking about comedy. There was some comedy in that as well. Oh, comedy with Oh my god! Calamitous, calamitous defender. Terrific. This is, this I mean, it's been the theme recently. Oh oh. Yeah, I was going to say. Speaking <laughs> speaking of calamitous defending, three must to one be. winning tip from VG Tips coming up next. Well, that was that. you with that shirt. Yeah, I was, 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 was going to say, with the live bird upon my chest, this is not the result I love. I could believe Liverpool were on to win that game. I could not believe the Bookies were doing it. Well, Louis Armstrong sitting with me here, blowing his own trumpet. Three to one. Boy, it's good odds. I mean, you've got to get on that. Ridiculous odds. Yeah, ridiculous odds. And it was only that price because if I was a gambler, it was only that. It was only that price because Barcelona got thumped in the previous in the previous game. Where's one? Where's one of them ones? I said when the joke. Let's say when the draw was made, I'm not underestimating Basel Done. because of what happened Done. to us previously. Yeah, yeah. Last time we were in the same Champions League group as Basel, they knocked us out. Plus, it's nice. We on needed pizza. a win. It was free or oh we didn't. Christ. It's nice on pizza and pasta. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well that'd be that'd be too. Too. yeah, you remember that, especially no, no, because no. of what happened to United. Yeah, we, had, we like, had about three weeks worth of I, I, I was going to ask you, you know, how's, how's your pasta? Twitter, Twitter, Twitter was fantastic. I got when he was at school. We're not out yet. If I was a teacher, I'd have aimed a blackboard rubber right at his head. Can you imagine him at school? Again? <laughs> the worst, the worst thing is, I do have some schoolmates on Facebook who probably can attest that I was that it, kind yeah. of little toe yeah. Um But FC uh, Balls are one in a Liverpool nice nil in a nice way. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marco Estrella got the only goal of the game on 52 minutes. Now, what might, now for me, what must what must be said? Um, defending poor, reactions poor, passing people. But I'm not going to say that first word on it. But the source of consternation was the was the fact that Mignolet made the save, which uh, I, think, I think it was Skirtles, I think it was Skirtles had it when he was stretching. It was one of them. Was Mignolet made the save, and no one else reacted. And Strella, boom, straight in. And I'm and I'm and I'm, 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 I'm watching this. I'm watching this, ready to throw furniture around. Like, yeah. how are we defending like that again yeah. when we know the problem is set piece? Well, remember, remember what I said last season. Remember what I said to you guys last Chris, season. Chris, stop it for a minute. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're, 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 he's we're, only a supporter and he's ready to throw furniture around. <laughs> no, 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 can you imagine true. what it's like when your living's depending on it? <laughs> you got me, yeah. and you're on a bar of soap, and you've got three kids to feed, and you've got a, a, thing, a mortgage, and all the rest of it. The reassurance. These drills, these drills, you do, you should do once, twice a week. Yeah, and there's something that I did with kids because yeah. you do things where you fire yeah. things in. 
Mm -hmm. And on purposely, what you, what you do, you manufacture that little bit where the goalkeeper parries it back into play, mm -hmm. right? Or you or you even have a ball under your arm, and then these little drills in around the box where you just drop a loose ball, mm -hmm. and it's like, bang, you've got to react. And and sometimes you do it for the forwards, and sometimes you do it for the defenders. And what happens is, it, it, you get the, you, the, where the defenders, as long as they get to the, the ball first and make first contact, mm -hmm. is the key. Yeah. So course. even if they hook it into row Z, it matters not. Yeah, well, oh, you end well, up getting well, beat. well, at least well, I was going to say, at least yeah. you don't concede. You end up getting beat by a hurt pop. <laughs> is it reassuring <laughs> to know your crap? You know, I mean, one of the Sheffield teams? That's a bit of an irony. No, That's sorry, like Ross Vernon sorry, supporting not, Leeds trying to mock. Not that? one of the Sheffield teams. There is only one team in Sheffield. Ooh! Ooh. 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 <laughs> 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 he, can say oh, that. He, he can say that when he's watching on the telly from Spain. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to get any comebacks <laughs> if, he, if he visits his relatives in, a, in, in the Sheffield borough of Hounslow. <laughs> he ain't going to get any comebacks is it? from a, from a blight. Uh, and I'm not following Leighton Orient to Bramall Lane, that sort of little place. I don't play there. They're playing there this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have you know. I'll have you know. Go on, crap. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> but in fact, I mean, I mean, in fact, I mean, that's for me, that's the source of consternation, the fact that it's repeatedly on set pieces. If you've got a problem defending set pieces, yeah. then obviously there's more work that needs to be done. I the the, uh, the like, like what I tried to do with the Ibis fours last season, as Gavin will attempt. Yeah. It's one of them ones. We didn't used to do. We didn't used to do that that many drills before matches. So last season, about halfway, through, about just before halfway through last season, I I instituted right. We're going to meet up half hour, forty five minutes earlier than normal, even though we normally meet meet up. So for an amateur league side, Ibis FC, um, we usually meet up an hour before kickoff. We were meeting an hour, an hour and forty-five to two hours before kickoff That's to intense. get to get drills in. Yeah, you're too intense. Because of the end. no, but it's one, no, it's one of them ones. I want to help the side. I wanted to help the side. <laughs> to it, well, so um, there's there's a line. There's there's a line in there. I like that. I yeah. like that. No, so, but what's wait, wait, look, what's no, no, no. I got I got a quote. I got a quote for it. I was too intense. I know exactly. exactly. Like, I was accused okay. that, but why? Why? <laughs> You're because you want to win. Yeah, of course. Because you were so all you want to do yeah. is you want to do well, or you want to give yourself the best chance of winning. Well, of course. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. How long's Stevie G got left? St what do you mean? How long's he got left? A year? Another season? You'd say this season and maybe another one. Pushing it. Yeah. What I'd, do you think? Yeah. No, I'd go. No, I'd go the same. I've got yeah, to say, he's, he's getting ready now. Running on it. Yeah. Maybe you can, you can see. I mean, Henderson's been handed the vice captaincy. And he's next in line. So it'd be, it'd be one, it'd be one there. Running do we know? Do yeah, we know if he's doing his coaching badge? Um, I'm not. Sure. I don't know because I, I, I could see a seamless transition into the background. Really see, know. I could have seen that with Jamie Carragher. Yeah, he's, he's, a money. he's a real student of the game. He's in the academy, isn't he? He's in the academy, Carragher. I think so. What a good game he talks. Really. I mean, when you look at the Durf, when you look at the Durf defensive talent now in the English game, right? And I'll go back. And I'm thinking, how would you set a team up back in the day? Like the only one I think who tried it was Odell, and, mm -hmm. and I think he flirted with it, Venables, and he canned it. But when you look at like the abundance of talent we had in central defence, or even a back five, mm -hmm. you say to yourself, like, let's. The other extreme would be say Arsenal in recent years, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, they they plan around their their forward play, mm -hmm. as in we'll score more goals than you. Which is a little bit nonsensical. Well, similar to Newcastle, circa ninety-five to about ninety-eight, yeah. we'll try and outscore you. But they didn't have any, any plan B. But don't get. But, but but when you look at the England side, you say like you've got your Adams, you've got your, your Campbell, you've got your Ferdinand, you've got your Carragher, you've got your Keon, mm. and you say you know what we can even afford an injury. You mm. take. And I've probably forgotten someone, you know, maybe Southgate, someone like that. You know, mm. I mean, he could have took the bag off his head. And and then, you know, I mean, you you get three three blinding centre backs. You're going to be a tough nut to crack. Mm. You're going to be an hard sight to beat right from the very off. Mm. Three and out of the, probably the ten top centre holes in the world, we probably had five or six of them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And Anton Ferdinand would have been nowhere near that England team because, <laughs> as Sitz <laughs> said, don't like he it. he wouldn't he wouldn't realise they he wouldn't realise danger if you lit his toe on fire with a Bunsen burner. Yeah. I love that as a quote. That's, that's a, that's, that quote is genius, I must say. 
We are, let's shift on in terms of the Champions League. Ludo Gretz um, won Real Madrid 2. A hard-fought game, actually. But Marcelino on six minutes gave um, Ludo Gretz the lead. Cristiano Ronaldo, after missing a penalty, scored one on 25 minutes. And Karen Benzema rounded out scoring on 77 minutes. Ooh. Madrid happy to get out of Ludo Gretz with the three points. Have we mentioned that we've got a book out? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> seen the show, could seen, seen the show, buy the book. <laughs> Just like I was saying a few weeks ago, seen the show, buy the show. Um, if Benzema scores against you, you know you, you, you know you've got problems. I mean, mm. the Real well, Madrid, gonna buy. Real Madrid yeah. fans, you know. Uh, if you read the crap, still words, up in arms. Uh, what he's still doing there, and what why De, De Maria is not. VGTips.co.uk. Um, you what? know, Benzema is. Lacking, and the Real Madrid fans wanted him out and Di Maria to stay, but of course, yeah, Florentino Perez, Florentino Perez <laughs> so, doesn't care about any of that. So, what you're saying is, if they go to vgtips.co.uk, <laughs> they could not only order the book, right? They could also have a tenner on your thing and come out because money in front, ten, and then you've got you've got money at the end of the week to take the wife for a, a, a night at the pictures and a nice bit of winning so you, to change <laughs> See, that was, pizza. pizza. VGC. VGT, 10, a bit of FC bars will want it. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool nil. <laughs> terrible. Nah, he's terrible. He's terrible. He's terrible. Well, you know what? Let's let's swing on to uh, Group C. Then it's a Petersburg nil, Monaco nil in the early kickoff. Bayer Leverkusen three, Benfica one. Um, Kiesling scoring on 25 minutes. Song Hung Min um, scoring on 34 minutes. Easy for me to say. Um, Salvio scoring on 61 minutes and. Kemp Oh my God! <laughs> Cal oh, Hanoglu scoring a penalty score. on just another game. Sixty-four. G man, next results yours, dude. This is the best part of the show. <laughs> Only part of the show where I get to talk. I, <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't know. I thought he was a mute. I didn't know you did so. <laughs> uh, I thought he was a new. No, no, um, Arsenal four, um, going yeah. to Castle right one, and yeah. um, let's start with this game. Um, Danny Welbeck getting a tremendous hat trick. Well done, Danny Welbeck. Yeah, okay. um, Danny Welbeck oh. scoring on the twentieth second minute, thirtieth minute, and fifty second minute. Um, with in between, with um, Sanchez scoring on the forty first, and um, yeah, Yamaz scoring on the sixty first minute from the penalty spot. Um, now, how I look at this game. Chesney is, sending off. I want to hear about that. Chesney sending off. I'll get to Danny Welbeck's hat tricks. What I want to talk about is because, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. before the match, Arsenal were heavily criticised. You know, considering you know Giroud's out, we're not buying a real striker. You know, Danny Welbeck's not up for it. At being at Manchester United, only scoring three goals in something like two years or something like that. Yeah, and um, you know, a lot, a lot of Arsenal fans and. Um, Got a shout out, um, North London Gooners on Facebook, who has a lot of criticism for Arsenal and certain things that happen at the club. Yeah, were proven wrong on that day because Danny Welbeck's hat trick, I've got to say, is you know, for a striker from where he's coming from, you know, it was a pretty good hat trick. Well, yeah. Where he's been coming from is the left wing. Well, and I, and I think what he said in the paper, I'll I'll doff me cap to him. I, I'd yeah. like I like to shake his hand. I'd say ten out of ten because it's it's a time when you should speak up and, and pipe up and stick up for yourself. Which in the early career I probably did too much. Mm -hmm. Then I went too quiet, like in the, in the middle part, yeah. and I should have stood up. Which is in in the book again. I should have stood up for now, Danny. What he's done, he's gone. Listen, it, he's kept stum. He's kept quiet to begin with. He's just gone out to play, and then he said, you know what? This is what I'm capable of. Right, when I'm played in the correct position mm -hmm. because for too long, and he did criticize uh, Van Gaal, but I'll be honest with you, right? This is probably out of uh, latter day respect for Ferguson. Uh, some of it I think totally misguided because when I when I when you look, so you're talking about legacy, I'm, I'm saying what legacy and the, and the mythical youth policy that turned out five, five, six players over the 20 years that he was there. And I've criticized Dory for turning only turning out 10 players, right? Yeah. But back to Danny, right. There's a lot of time he played off the front man or, or to the left of the front man under Ferguson. He's done the same under Rodson. So the moral of the story is, if Arsene Wenger's played him in his right position, yeah, which he has. this is how he's repaid him. Yeah. This he's shown, listen, look, well, this is the, everybody, media, supporters, the football, this is what I'm capable of. That's not really true. Like, you, awesome. 
at the end of the day, you let your talents do the talking for you rather yeah. than doing the talking, talking all over the papers. Well, Mike, Mike Harneman's agreed with that. He says spot on. Well, like even said, he wanted to play through the middle. He plays through the middle and scores free. You could tell he wasn't used to it as well because he left the match ball behind. That little bit. Where's the match ball? Oh, yeah, I forgot it. <laughs> it's like, all right, I know you're not used to scoring. Neither am I. So it's one of them. Was, but I play left back. So it's he's one of them. But, um, I mean, Jamie Bailey says, still don't believe he's a good signer. Jamie, would you, <laughs> Jamie, would you, would you like to articulate to the people why you don't think, um, you don't think Danny Welbeck is a good signer? Jamie, where is he? Yeah, sorry. Um, the reason why I don't think he's a good, and good, uh, good evening to everybody that's in the, uh, the good, evening, good, good evening, Jamie. Um, the reason why I don't think he's a good signing is one, he was again Arsenal's late signing, and two, he basically has turned up as a well, as a, as a signing that nobody wanted. As far as I'm concerned, Giroud's, Giroud's still going to be the first the first team up until Welbeck shows that he scored more goals than um, than Giroud. So well, I'm going to give him until the end of the season, but I'm going to keep my tongue short and sweet by saying. Unless he scores more goals than Giroud did last season, he's still not one of those. He's still not one of those players for me. Well, how many did he get last season, Giroud? Sorry, just coming to a rest. Yeah. yeah, I think they are right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> but listen, what I'd say here is, what I'd say here is, you're, 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 you're right. You're right. You're right, you're right to, to let time be the judge. Mm. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, it's the same I'm, with any signing. John, I'm a, I'm a football coach myself. I, I, I see this all the time. I, uh -huh. I, I always talk about giving to, um, people time or giving people a chance. And yeah. as you said, United have not really produced anything over the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. But they still have produced. And most of their players are now at Crew or um, Stephen Itch or even Accrington. Um, yeah. And to me, that's still a positive sign. Positive well, regardless of whether I they're mean, in the I mean, first, I'm not being funny like that. Yeah, but years ago, they, they, these type of clubs, and they still should, as far as I'm concerned, they should be producing their own players. I'll do, if I'm if I'm manager at Crew or I'm manager at Lake Norin or I'm manager at Stevenage, right? You only dip into that market if you're if you're short on numbers or it's going to improve what you've actually bought through the ranks yourself. You understand? I, I'm a great believer in like you, what you do. You keep your own house in order. You you keep your own back garden tidy. You keep your own. You sort your own. You take care of your own business. I, and I thought, but I fully understand where you're coming from, and and I think you're right uh, to say, well, what we'll do, we'll let time be the judge. And I think I think Danny is is absolutely tailor made for Arsenal, and I think he'll go from strength to strength in his career now. Honestly, do. And um, I, 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 but I, I, see, thing, I see I see what you mean because if you look at um, if you look at the grand scheme of Arsenal at the moment, they've got a whole bunch of British talent, yeah. which is actually yeah. all first teamers either for their country or yeah. for the first team or yeah. for Arsenal. Yeah, and what, did I, say, what I, did I say on YouTube eighteen months ago? Because uh, I, I pulled out a quote by uh, by Arsene Wenger, and they, they they questioned him in the media and said, you know, uh, uh, you know, when I, I listen, don't take this the wrong way. They, it's always been revered as the Bank of England club, and I said Bank of England club. I said it, it's like HSBC, the, the World's Bank, you know, or whatever United Colours of Benetton. I said <laughs> it's never the Bank of England club, no way in a million years, not now. And then it, and then the, it was put, obviously, probably. Uh, let me say a little bit more um, subtly than I've said it. And he said, Wenger's reply, well, well, I don't look at a player's passport. And I'll come on YouTube and I'll say, well, perhaps he should. And what he's done um, with like your Ramses and your Walcotts and your Oxys and and, Nad and Danny and, and uh, you've got Chambers, he, what he's done there, he's got a nucleus of good, solid, upcoming, uh, and, and in a couple of cases, well-established UK or English players. And the other thing I put to you is, it, is it not a good thing for, for competition for places? Because you've got now you've got Danny Welbeck uh, uh, competing with Giroud, uh, Podolski is looking like he's the odd man out, um, and, and you've also you've got the, the goings on where you could probably bring when Theo comes back to full fitness, you could probably play him as a front man off the front man or slightly to the right of the front man. So I'd say competition for places is a massive plus. You know what? You know what? You know, speaking, um, just just kind of adding adding to the whole Welbeck thing. I mean, Wayne Tuman has said he was a panic buyer to me because Wayne oh. didn't sign anyone, and Manu, and so on and so on, signed strikers. But he's a good player, and I think he will come good. Uh, Mike, I'd say a panic buyer, not Welbeck. Balotelli was a panic buyer. Yeah, 
Not no, it's, no it's, I'd it's, say Andy Carroll, yes. I'll go, I'll go with on. you on that. Jamie, is Jamie still there? Jamie's still there. Yeah, yeah, Jamie, yeah I'm just, Jamie, I was just going to say, said, not, he, I, I understand what you're them. saying. It's just um, what, from what I've seen um, over the time that um, we've actually brought in these players, hmm. as as you said with the uh, with the Manchester United system, if I look at it, I'd, Arsenal's brought a whole bunch of players through and I think it's been pretty much the same thing. The house has been in order, yeah, but yeah. it's still been um, taking players um, onto onto loan markets. And the only person that's made a go of it and properly done something about it is Jack. And when he said that he's not going to anybody lower than um, a top class t- um, team or a top division team, he made the right choice for himself. Well, Whereas everybody beauty, else has said the that game, they just it? wanted to play football. It's the beauty of the game, it's all about opinions. You said, you said yeah. Jamie, that if uh, Welbeck was another late buyer, I think, if I heard you right. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. somebody else has said that... Yeah. Uh, Mike, Mike Byron... Kahneman's also said signing that nobody wanted. Yes, but Wenger, but couldn't, Wenger couldn't get his main target, so he went for someone because he, no, he, went, to, he went for somebody as Arsenal's who... fans, would have only slated him anyway if he didn't get a forward. He went for somebody who... I don't agree with that. He went for somebody who was quality who suddenly became available when one of his main strikers suddenly became injured. Well, there's it's, the potential it's, it's, for development as well. Glass, it's glass half empty, glass half full, and too yeah. too many Arsenal fans online uh, have got their glass half empty. Yeah. I would mm. personally, in their place, for that money, the similar sort of money that was, well, other people would be quoted at done, higher prices or Armand's good. I'd be saying manna from heaven. I'd be saying thank you, lucky stars. That, yeah. from, that signing, very, very late on, mm. not intended, admittedly, but came about through other reasons. Oh, I need a people dropped concern. in dropped in no, no, Arsenal's no, no, no. lap. No, no, no. Well, 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 you know, well, you know, well, you know what we yeah. do, we do need to, we do need to shift on because time is pressing on. But I mean, it's one that is one that was some, sometimes the old saying is better to be lucky than good. Kind of, kind of, John said he's playing in the right so. position now. That's yeah, it. exactly. That That's where someone's always going to flourish. And I think, I think what people forget about Danny Rolbeck and the Arsenal fit, considering everything that's happened at Manchester United, everything that happened at Man United in terms of him playing out of position, not getting the run in the first team consecutively, not playing as a centre forward consecutively to Man United, is that to go to Arsenal, tactically, it's probably the best possible oh. fit you could think of. In terms of coaching, again, He's made for best Arsenal. possible yeah. fit could think yeah, of. of course. And of course, when you factor in the money, right, when you go and think that you're going to pay, what, six million pounds right, to go and get Falcao for a season? Danny, Murphy, yeah. Danny Murphy said on it, and at, that night went well back, an absolute snip. Yes. An absolute And I'll be honest, I wouldn't argue with, uh, unless I had a very good case, I wouldn't be arguing with Mike Phelan or Brian Boxer either, who both, who both said that, you know, they yeah. couldn't understand it, letting him go. Yeah. You know, there's answers. Let's, Mike, let's, let's ask a actually, question. Actually, quick, well, quick, wait, quick. Jamie, we got, we got, we got to shift on. We got, we got to shift on because time is pressing on. Um, by the way, 60 minutes, Chesney sending off a rush of blood to the head. Didn't need to do it, to be perfectly, to be perfectly honest. The thing about that. Five minutes, so. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. But, I mean, and the Lake Nell Borussia Dortmund three, Chiro Immobile scoring on three minutes, and Ramos scoring on 69 and 79 minutes. Uh, let's take a couple of select Europa League results. FK Krasnodar won, Everton won. Um, da Silva Ferreira um, scoring on 43 minutes with Samuel Eto scoring on 82 minutes. Not a bad buy, actually, for Everton, anyway. Um, so on was Celtic one Dynamo Dynamo sorry Zagreb um, nil um, Commons getting the only goal on six minutes Tottenham one Besiktas one um, Harry Kane opening and scoring on 27 minutes and Denver Bar scoring an 18th minute penalty shifting quickly on to the weekend we move on to Saturday 4th of October 2014 Hull City 2 Crystal Palace nil the army scoring on 60 minutes and Nikita Jelovic scoring on 89 minutes. The Arme's, the Arme's take, not too bad, and his tally is kind of racking up in comparison yeah. to what it was at West Ham. How's yeah. it going, Neil Warner? <laughs> um, Leicester City 2, Burnley 2. Um, Schlapp scoring on 33 minutes, Michael Kiteley scoring on 39 minutes, Mares scoring on 40 minutes, and Wallace scoring a peach of a free kick on Goal of the week in six minutes, definitely. Remember, stuff of the week is later on in the shot. Um, must be said with a live bird upon my chest. This is the result that I do love the best this week, and that's Liverpool. And that's Liverpool two, West Brom one. Not the greatest game for us, it must be said. But Lalana's goal on forty-five minutes was I. I'm a fan of it because it wasn't one of them hit and hope ones. It was te- almost technical ecstasy um, because Lalana. No, Lalana. Lalana's little drag back to get away from two defenders. That's what I want to see players doing. 
taking those taking those gambles taking taking, taking those sort of gambles up top not on the edge of your own 18 the yard box, to you but, right now right and henderson's assist and the finish henderson team. is arguably not just your best player <laughs> but your most important player and i was yeah, just about to refer yeah, to that yeah. who's been defending him since we signed him when you when when certain guys when certain guys look, 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 not look, look, look. pointing fingers look, 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 when look. certain guys were mocking us for signing Henderson I've look. always been a staunch advocate I'll be honest and there's all the proof of that at the beginning proof. right I said for what you signed him for not he's working. not going to be that guy no was yeah, I think you're that, exactly. that my direct quote. he's not that guy yeah he's not but now he's becoming that yeah. To the point because where everybody else is on the down list. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how I think that's it. That's unfair. But, but no, that, that's not, that's unfair. The, the thing that I want to say is this: right? you're obviously, problem. you're obviously missing Daniel Sturridge in terms of, of course, goals, no doubt. energy, movement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No doubt. But the guy that's making up for it the most out of everybody else, Jordan Henderson. So yeah. my thing is this: even though Sturridge is, you know, working his way back, if Henderson goes out of that team yeah. for whatever reason, I'm a little bit more worried. Where it showed, about where it showed last season. He showed at the, back, at, the back, at the back end of last season. He he was missed. He was he was legitimately missed. And um, moving on to the goals, actually, um, Saido Berahino scored a 56th minute penalty, which actually should have been a free kick. Never, never a penalty. It should. It actually should have been a free kick on just outside the box. This is my but, thing with that but, respect camp. But linesmen's but linesmen are absolutely useless on a general basis this is my thing with and Henderson scored his own goal on on 61 minutes not an, an own goal his goal that's where i'm going yeah this is my thing with that respect campaign right it's a load Don't, of it's a load of bs it is yeah. right because with the, you've got basic competencies and kpis that they talk about in terms of you know this dude's dropped a key performance in the arm. no but i'm like there are, there are things that you're required to get right there are things you're required yeah, to do and the referee and his assistants, right, are supposed to spot that. And if you're not going to spot that, I'm sorry, but what are you doing officiating in the top level? Well, I think, I think. Well, the definition of professional counts loosely. Who, who, after last weekend, won't be referee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they get, they get bumped yeah, down to league, league two. Yeah. This weekend. Yeah. At least yeah. two. Yeah. It's it's included, but... Oh, gosh. Oh, of course, right. I mean, it's. I mean, I mean. But you beat West Brom, that powerhouse, that mighty house of West Brom, managed by Alan Irvine. As as Sid said earlier, you can only beat what's put in front. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no, 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 it's it's no. it's what it's one of them was. We've already seen some interesting results this season as it is. So it's, it's one of them was a potential for well, everyone. Because well. I thought that that thing, even though you've spoken about it for too long already, because like, <laughs> yeah. it's Liverpool. I honestly think they made hard work of that. Yeah, of course. Two one two. No, that, yeah. Even though you got to give credit a lot of a lot of uh, credit to West Brom. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, West, I mean, West Brom, I mean, West Brom were were they they held their they held their own, but the fact of the matter is that game should have been out of sight. Yeah. in the first half. Get yeah. on West Brom to but, get down there. Yeah. So no, I, I don't think West Brom. No, I, 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 I think I, West I, Brom I, have I, enough quality to stay. Yeah, I think, I think they probably do it just barely, but they have enough quality. Yeah. 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 Well, well, they're the only ones with that dubious stat at being bottom of Christmas and surviving. Yeah. They're still got, got, got good memory, in it. I don't believe they've still got that stat. It's like, it's like the Undertaker's streak. How long is it going to go for? How yeah. long is it going to last? How long is that going to hold up? Yeah. But, um, but Sunderland three, Stoke on Connor Wickham scoring on four minutes, Charlie Adams scoring on 15 minutes, Stephen Fletcher scoring on 23 minutes. Let's just found his goal scoring touch again because he scored again on 79 minutes. I think, right, the key mm -hmm. player there was Connor Wickham. Yes, definitely. Yeah. He needed to yeah. get going. And I tell yeah. you what, for me, arguably a man of the match performance, right? Yeah. He gets on the score sheet, which they needed him to do because last season he was the saviour. Right? Last season. Yes, yeah, but hang on. He's only the saviour last season. He was only going to be as good as he was this season because he went on loads of Sheffield Wednesday. So <laughs> I'll tell you the key. You know the key. He got his hip switch touched back. You know the key. I'll tell you the key. This is the key out, yeah, right? Sure. And, 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 uh, look, before I come there, very quickly, because you mentioned yeah. time and time and time again about Chesney, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he's sending off. But what mm -hmm. the coaching staff will look at is how it is it came to the, uh, the that situation whereby Chesney was exposed. Yeah, by, by, by the yeah. yeah, you understand? Yeah, so yeah. What, that much space appeared between mm -hmm. the last defender or the last two defenders and the goalkeeper. Yeah. Where he's had to come out and try and make the ground up. Now, yeah, on, on to this, well, yeah. I'll tell you the key is the manager. 
Poor uh, I've got a lot of time for him, mm. right? And what he's done, if my memory serves me correct, going on the highlights last night, mm -hmm. they was on the pitch together, mm -hmm. right? Wickham and Fletcher were on the pitch together. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's too many teams now allowing the opposition to have a, a cigar at the back by playing one up forward. forward. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And, as, and a defender, as a defender, as a defender at amateur league level, it's so easy. If you if you've got two if you've got two on one, get one to press, get one to hold. It's pretty it's pretty easy, and then you've got to make sure your fullbacks are keeping an eye keeping an eye on the wingers, and you're not getting overloaded in midfield. But if you're playing against one, it's not it's actually it's actually not too bad. But both those Sunderland strikers needed a confidence. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Confidence. Well, he's just come back from injury, Fletcher, hasn't he? Yeah. So he's he's come back and hit the ground running. Bit yeah, yeah. All right, that's good stuff. But you know what? I just want to follow up on Don's point about. Oh, Wickham's run. Sorry, Connor Wickham's run. Yeah, no, no, but, yeah, amazing. Yeah. No, amazing. Oh, brilliant. 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 Yeah, absolutely brilliant. brilliant. But I want to go back to John's point about Poyo, and I want to say this. He did actually say last week on Match of the Day that he felt that the thing was coming together. Mm. And all that the team needed to do was continue to do what they were doing, and the goals would come. He actually said, Do that. what you do when you did with to me. Yeah. And now, <laughs> and now the goals come. Now, there's a Chris Rock Chris goals come. Um, um, I do old. think, though, for Stoke, that the Victor Moses injury, I think it's like his hamstring, it's going to be very, very big for them. Very, yeah. very big because he has a huge drawback to that. There is a massive and Moses' his head as well. <laughs> there is a massive drawback to that because he's been very, very influential <laughs> yeah. out on that wing. Yeah, so yeah, about his pace, not so much his guy. Well, I think he's starting to get back to his big form mm -hmm. because he has shown glimpses. But without him there, Stoke are a completely different team. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, get a better offer sooner rather than later. Yeah, nah, definitely. Yeah, move on. <laughs> Um, speaking of moving on, actually, we're going to move on to Swansea to Newcastle to Wilfred Bonny. Uh, uh, Wilfred Bonny, another lookalike of someone in this room. Uh, um, <laughs> another lookalike we've had fun with, scoring on 17 minutes. Pat PC say scoring on 43. Um, Wayne Routledge scoring on 50 minutes. And Newcastle showing that bounce back ability once again by C say scoring on 17 minutes. Two points shot. There you ask me. Yeah, Swansea too, but I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I went mean, Paul G's under serious. He's pressure. been good to me, Matt. He fooled on the uh, talk sport. I had a little chat with him Friday night, um, early hours of Saturday morning about um, lack of black coaches and managers in football. We're going to get into um, that. Yeah. that space. Um, if you'll pardon the phrase. <laughs> but, uh, if you'll pardon the phrase. But the worst of it, the, 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 uh, what we spoke about was um, uh, probably in terms of. Uh, the subject matter it wasn't really relevant but he asked me about whether i've got any sympathy for Pardew, and i should have i should have elaborated and, and maybe amplified the answer you know because i said in a word no you know mm. but he, he i mean I, I all i'd say was i've, I've got Matt about as much sympathy for a you know a multi-millionaire manager who's going to be a cab driver who, who, who's, who's got the you know the same amount of sympathy for me driving a cab 60 hours a week you know what i mean at the end of the day he's been given a a lot of time two years ago or whatever it was he was manager of the year um and what he's done is i think there's been a level of tolerance in in terms of uh, the, the, the the chairman because uh, it, it's obvious to me who pulls the strings in terms of outgoings and incomings yeah. and as the chairman and the people around him yeah. it's not the manager yeah. and the level of tolerance comes in whereby the manager says well to himself and maybe to the chairman, well, I'll take the flat, I'll take all the stuff coming in mm -hmm. the media and the supporters and the Pardew out brigade and, yeah. you know, get rid of Pardew and whatever it is. It's, 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 it's deflected attention yeah. very nicely but, from but, Mike Ashley. Yeah, but with the whole sports director arena thing, it's been that's, well, a, that's, it's a, that's, been a, well that's, that's a long been well paid for it. So I think it's a in, long in effect, he's, he's got the stage where he, you know, he's almost prostituting himself mm. because oh, you, you even want to well, achieve Mike something. Ashley's not the big heel anymore. And it's, it's Swan the Swansea should have had that game dead and very long yeah. before the hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should yeah, have won yeah. that three, yeah. four, or something or other. But but you've got to question. You've got to question the uh, like the ethics and the self respect of Pardew, whereby after I think he's taken now. I mean, I said he makes me look like Bill Shankly. He said he said some. He said before the weekend it was like something like six points out of forty two. Mm. I, I mean, I never even had a run as bad as that. <laughs> but their defence, I mean, I don't know yeah. what you think, but I've now seen Newcastle's last two games. Mm. They're in cut bullet defence. They're defending. No. It's, it's beyond awful. I, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's dreadful. No, I, I have to agree with you. And I think, you know, it just goes to show, because Patrick Stembe, he said he's come back from injury and he's been nothing short of sensational. Mm. Without him, they don't have their last two points. It's yeah. as simple as that. Like he is, yeah, absolute revelation. So 
I think there were bits that are working. But I, I... No, de- defensively, I mean, Swansea strolled through those goals. It was just a walk in the park. And, uh... This is what I mean. In, in the key area, they're, they're disjointed. Like when you were saying off there, they were a little bit top heavy. And, you know, they definitely need more work defensively. But up front, if you keep Cissé fit, he's going to get you goals. He's shown that already. But I, I think, you know, as you say, opening defensively, that needs to get sorted out in Sharpish. We cannot continue to go this way, especially with all the pressure from the fans. At some point, it's got to tip. It's got to tip. Something's got to give, hasn't it? Well, he's putting up with it because, you know, like I say, he's getting very well paid for it. If it was me, I'd, I'd, a long time ago, not now, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about a long time ago. He, he, when he's negotiated this uh, mythical six-year deal, I'd have said to, said to the chairman, I, I think that, I think there's going to be, a, without a shadow of a doubt, break clause because yeah. you don't get to become, a, a, you know, uh, almost a billionaire by being an idiot. Yeah, um, so there'd be a break clause. But, uh, you know, if, I'd say, well, if I'm going to get a maximum of whatever it is, a year or 80 months' salary, um, and we're going to put it out, I mean, I've got a six-year deal, be that as it may, I, I want to do, if I'm going to uh, win, lose, draw, uh, or succeed at, uh, or, or foul, I want to do it on my own terms. Yeah. You understand? So, you know, keep, he should have been allowed to keep the player. He's shown that, or has he shown, that he can't handle top draw uh, temperamental players that he accused me of not being able to do. Pardon you. He accused me of not being able to uh, handle, handle temperamental players by letting uh, part with uh, Kabai, mm. who was their most... Um, Probably their most influential and yeah. Uh, yeah. inventive no, I, midfield player. I would argue that. And, I, and I the think, back four, I look shambolic. I think right, that um, Kabai leaving has had a much bigger impact than anyone else can actually fathom. I think you have to be in and around the club to understand how big of an impact Kabai leaving actually had. Um, I think his teammates now are a little bit lost, especially in the middle of the park. In terms of shielding the back four, that's a little bit weak. Because you don't see that. There's a sign in my book. There's a sign in my book. There's a saying in my book. I've got, I've got it from a, a guy I think he's in US football. Mm. Right? You shouldn't be set up like that. There's no way you should be set up like that, whereby you're totally reliant on one or two individuals. And the saying is, that. the saying is, everyone is important, nobody is necessary. Mm-hmm. You understand? So you should be set up so that if someone parts company with you, you go, boom. It's not even good. We're not even going to have a blip. Next we're gonna, we're that's gonna, how it's We're going to crack yeah. on. Yeah. And, and, yeah. No, that is, you know what I mean? Anyway, just just a point. Yeah, but then, but then it's all numbers. You've got the parasitic media who always love to shine a light on one person and raz them, and like literally hold them and put them on a pedestal. Isn't Mike Ashley the problem? I think so. No, no, yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah it's, it's like, the art of deflection. Yeah, the art of Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick up for him a little bit oh, because at the end of the day. It, Long before because he got you, there, there was people. Oh, no, right. Right. Listen, I'm like, I do. I've got no, I've got no agenda. I don't know the geezer from Adam. I look to You know, were they not, were they not in dire financial straits? And he's come in there and straightened it out, balanced the books. Yeah. In, in, in the meantime, until they did lend him his money, mm-hmm. or, or you know, so I don't think uh, all this cockney mafia. I think it's out of order. Yeah, I think it's totally out of order. Noah, let's shift on because Aston Villa and Neil Man City too. Yaya Torre scoring on 82 minutes. Nice little run, actually. A nice finish. Good finish. And Sergio Aguero scoring on 88 minutes. The stuff of ch- the stuff champions are made of. Yeah, I mean, they left bam, it. bam, 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 bam. Some, some at what's at some point the dam's going to break down because of the pressure, yeah. and Villa ended up doing it. I was going to say they left it late, but it, it was a deserved win. And I, I kind yeah. of hark back to what I was saying last week about the criticism of Yaya Torre. Right, form is temporary, class is permanent. Right, yeah, exactly. Yaya Torre is world class. Now, the thing, as I say, that a lot of people aren't necessarily understanding is everything else that has happened to him over the last calendar year, which, right? yeah, we, which, which we did back. talk about. Yeah, we talked about right? always, right? But having said that, him getting back on the score sheet, absolutely massive for them because mm. doesn't, he, doesn't he score something like 20 odd goals last season? Yeah, on yeah. The field? yeah. so yeah. you know, for him, for him to be back in goal scoring form. Massive. And his rhetoric afterwards, mate. Well, listen, I'm, they, I'm not here to score. They've got, the goals. No, they've, got, they've got no option. They've got no option. He's Pellegrini's got no option but to try and manage him well. Yeah, of course. You understand? All this temperamental. You never send me a birthday cake, Cobblers. I don't know what that's about. I think it was. I, mean, a, load of, I think it was a load of crap from the agent trying to engineer a move I, or I, engineer I, a rise. But, yeah, the I, yeah. line, but the bottom line is, if it had been me, right? This is where I've got to t- I've got to doff my cap to Pellegrini and his staff around him. I'd have gone, all right, you want to go, you can go. Mm. Because at the time of uh, life he's at now, right, you're not going to get much more out of him. He yeah, asked me earlier on, he asked me earlier on about Gerard at, f- at 32, 33, 34. Tore's knocking on 32. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you talk about class, uh, form is temporary, class is permanent, be that as it may, you know, in the end, is you, you, you're talking about an ascendancy. And then when you get to the summit, inevitably there's there's only one way and that's and that's down well it's uh, always hard to do it's but, always but hard the to club, stay on top but, but the clubs are yeah. queuing up making. yeah of course. but me personally i wouldn't have anyone around that upsets the apple cart mm, yeah because what got them through when we when they did win the championship was they, they was all pulling together mm. and they was all they was all uh, you know playing 90 minutes plus to, to nick a result the old one team one dream and what where well, was it was it one one team hating united all it was way. a lovely finish <laughs> it was a lovely finish that goal but yeah the villa the villa defenders did like back off like yeah it was right it was one that was yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah don't worry about it you ain't gonna on, do nothing come on, on. Have a pop. And, and it's like oh my have god you didn't do it but then having said that, though, I think, you know, when you look at the run of games that Villa have had, and of course, a Bonn Hall four the top five dropping out of the game just Nazi. before kickoff, they've had a tough run, but they survived. Yeah, yeah, it's, they've it's, done well. Know, they, they haven't done badly at all. So I think, given that now, and you know, obviously the international break comes in, they've got time to regroup. And I think, you know, for me, they could be a surprise package this season. I'm not saying yeah, that they're going to go and get into the European places. No. And actually, but, nobody, nobody in this room has got a beard as good as Roy <laughs> <laughs> He, he, he looks like he will take you out and eat your children. One of them was with that, with that bit. It looks very rough of you. Um, oh, that work came from. Next result's yours from yeah. Sunday, 5th of October. So Manchester United 2, Everton 1. Angel Di Maria opened the scoring after 27 minutes. Stephen Nason got an equaliser for Everton after 55 minutes. Before Radamov Palkal opened his account on 62 minutes. Could have been could, could have been a couple for Falco on the day. I mean that little flick that Di Maria did to him, it was like that, that it was like, I was like, you know, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> but wait, what'd you what'd you what do you reckon of Falco? Give me a prediction. How many how many goals do you reckon he get? I, I think now that he started, right, I would say anywhere between fifteen and twenty for the season. On a side. Now that he started, yeah. Yeah, I think the, the, the crucial thing was getting him going. As I, said, now, as I said last week, the thing that a lot of people aren't necessarily paying attention to, to quote Thierry Henry, he does a lot of work that you don't see. Yeah. Right? He yeah. was he actually assisted on Van Persie's two goals in two games. So he wasn't necessarily, he didn't necessarily have to finish, but he was still playing well enough to provide. And now he's finishing as well, which means you've got the factor of, you don't know if he's going to set somebody else up or if he's going to score himself. Mm -hmm. So he's even more dangerous yeah. now. And he's, he's got a load of confidence behind him. Um, so yeah, I think 15 to 20 for the season, whether or not that means he's going to be worth the astronomical fee that they're talking six about. Mil, or the way, six mil, yeah. No, 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 no. Six the actual, the, the green transfer fee is something like 48. Well, it's 49. It's 49. They're, apparently, they're going to chalk that six million off. Which, how nice of Monaco to do that, by the way. That's such a benevolent gesture. Yeah, we'll sell you for 49 million. But yeah, it'll be one of them ones. But yeah, so I think this is, is off to the little boys room. Yeah. So we'll 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 come back to his yeah, yeah, favorite yeah. result of the weekend in a bit. So <laughs> you know, I, I think yeah, 15, 15 to 20 goals. Um, Everton for me probably should have won the game mm. because, and I, I've been saying this last few weeks, Manchester United are disjointed. As I said off air, very very top heavy going forward. You absolutely said something else off air. <laughs> Go, going well. forward, you absolutely love them. You do. You think. There's going to be goals coming from everywhere coming forward. When you look at the forward line and think there's goals there. But yeah, defensively, and I don't know if it's because of the injuries or because of how unbalanced the squad is, which is something that Louis Van Gaal said at the start of the season, which he still hasn't actually addressed for me personally. Um, he, won't, he won't sign any old defender. He won't, he won't sign a world-class defender or defenders unless he thinks they're world-class and they're available. Mm. He, won't sell, he won't buy somebody for the, the centre of, of that defence just for the sake of buying somebody. Yeah. He'll wait another whatever yeah. a few months a year whatever until the right person and as Sitz is always saying there is a dearth of, of world-class central defenders now yeah. there's yeah. nothing like the quantity that there used to be um, I don't think Van Hout will just buy for the same bit he'll, he'll wait till the right person's available but it's funny it's funny actually because my because my Kahneman said should have had Hummels but that was only ever rumours yeah was rumors, and we don't do rumours here rumours and the other thing as well in terms of the money involved is it's going to have to take an astronomical fee to begin with. The other thing is there's nothing attractive, right, for a top-class player about Manchester United right now, apart from being top. Maybe. There's only one man, <laughs> only, only one man of the match in that game, and he wasn't officially man of the match. Incredible. Mm -hmm. well, that's De Gea. So yeah, no, no, I absolutely 
10 million percent agree that with that. David Gerald. I mean, the hair. BDG. He absolutely won that game for Manchester United. Not just yeah. with the penalty saves. He made a string of Fantastic. Yeah. world class saves. It's been the thing, though. His his shot stop, and even, even here, his shot stop has never been in doubt. It's everything else. Yeah. He's got a lot more muscle than he had in Spain, I can tell you. Oh, there's, yeah. lot, there's more of him than there ever was. In but, Spain. you know, to speak about the defence briefly, um, again, I think there's confidence issues there. Rojo looked a bit nervy to me. Paddy McNair, as the junior one out of everybody in that back line, he looked the most confident and calm and composed defender out of the lot. Which I, is no pressure, right? Can I possibly be among the first to, to, you know, hands up, pat on the back to Black it for the block yeah. prior to De Gea save. Yeah. yeah. But oh, when, yeah. No. people ignored because of De Gea save, mm. they forgot that the first block yeah. From Blackie, who's taken yeah. a lot of stick lately, he did his job. Mm, well, but going back to what you're saying going. about uh, Louis Van Gaal not necessarily signing anyone, the players that he has brought into that defense, in terms of the, the youth players, and uh, you know, just to attach the, just to you know, debunk that myth that Manchester United aren't producing new players that are coming through anymore. Look at Blackie, look at McMahon. Both of them have come through, and for all intents and purposes, they play very, very well. They've arguably been Manchester United's best defenders so far this season in terms of in the middle um as i say i think McNair was very very good but again the thing that worries me is even though the team look comfortable and have a lead they're very very vulnerable at the back very very vulnerable yeah. but i'm hoping that you know with the lack of european football now being out of uh couple one cup as well that there's time for them to work on the defensive stuff get the shape right and actually you know not be as disjointed or top heavy as they are at the moment you know what? Let's go for a couple more result. A couple more results. Um, Tottenham one, Southampton nil. Um, Ericsson scoring on forty minutes, the only goal of the game, and there was one chance in this. I think it was Mame. Mame, yeah, Mame, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, how did he miss it? Yeah, it was all over. Yeah. It was all over. Yeah. Jesus but, um, Yeah, exactly. West Ham two, QPR nil. Nader Manua scoring an own goal on five minutes. Unluckily, so it must be said. Um, and Sacco scored on fifty-nine minutes as well. I tell you what, I've been impressed by Sacco. I yeah. really have. Him and Valencia have started very, very well for West Ham. Yeah. Big shout out to uh, our big boss Les. Uh, congratulations on that, and shout out to Mr. Mark James Lynch as well. Um, congratulations on the win. But yeah, I think. QPR though, you look at them and you have to say you're worried about them. You are because you're saying they're absolutely leaking goals at the minute. And them being where they are is just it's it's you know for me. It always knows when like, QPR I'll give it to you on a plate though. Yeah. I've got, yeah, I've, very, got fully very I've got a fully concur. I mean obviously Harry's just got out of his prayer in the plate, he's had a pop back at Neville's had a pop but again QPR, again Harry's shooting his mouth. Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, he's sticking, he's just sticking up for his club, he's sticking yeah. up for himself, and his staff, and players. But really and truly, you know, when you look at it, the minimum pre. Malcolm Madison said nearly 40 years ago, competing is everything in football, mm. right? Because that's your, that's your, that's your foundation, that's your starting point. Yeah, yeah. You understand? If you don't compete, I saw no determination, no tenacity no uh initiative no energy yeah they look so lethargic yeah, yeah you know what i mean and you're just thinking well someone go and, and just like set your store out mm. and, and put your foot in them mm. you know uh, try and raise the tempo but nah yeah. you know what i mean i thought it was shocking yeah. really shocking performance yeah. they didn't compete against man U. leicester did very well now my, my question <laughs> to you was this right as, as, as a vd tip what were the odds <laughs> Before the game of Leicester winning? Before the game? Yeah. Well, they were odds against. That's too long ago to tell you exactly what it was. But yeah, they were odds against. I, I mean, I haven't touched Man United this season <laughs> on a betting front. No, no, I don't until, And I don't think I will until the season ends. I don't really? bl- I don't believe Because it. there's a line I could you know, there, but two, I won't. I mean, there were still odds. They were odds on to win that, which is ridiculous. Two they, London, two Manchester clubs. That's my top four. Um, in, in, that, in that form that they were in. For them to be odds on to win a Leicester was against Leicester was ridiculous. Uh, right. But the time to have been on, yeah. of course, was uh, when they were three one down. Yeah, and Leicester yeah. were a big prize then. You know what? Yeah, G man, you want to take you want to take this final result? <laughs> hey, hey, it's your side. Hey, it's your side. I had to take a defeat. Now you got to take one. 
Oh. <laughs> and, and while you're doing that, a big, uh, albeit I do know the man, a big thumbs up to um, to Nigel Pearson for doing an excellent job. Yeah. At yeah, Leicester yeah. and uh, being, you know, just the right sort of manager in my opinion. Carry on, sir. So, yeah, moving on. Um, Chelsea 2, Arsenal 0 in the big um, London derby. Yeah. Speak up, man. Speak up. <laughs> <laughs> no, speak up. Speak up, man. Speak up. Uh, speak up. We've got a couple of Arsenal fans in the stand. We've got a couple of Arsenal fans in the stand. I don't want to talk about it. If this wasn't here, I wouldn't be here it was, yeah. was a draw on the touchline. Honestly, <laughs> 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 move. It's just Wenger. No move. So, on the touchline, Wilson awesome Wenger won one nil. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say at one point, just for a millisecond, I thought Jose was going to do a Paul Allcock with Paolo as a captain. Oh, he's <laughs> <so, laughs> like going like, like a baby like draw. <laughs> Well, well that's somebody was telling that on Twitter today, weren't they? Both favourite. Who would win in a fight between the two men? Yeah. Retweet for Vanga. Yeah, oh, favourite. So, someone good. actually did that. Because I, I was, I was seeing, I was seeing the old WWE people making WWE references who probably have never watched wrestling before. <laughs> and all I'm seeing is Royal Rumble, little title belt, Vanga Mourinho, and I'm like. Yeah, that was that would have been funny about fifteen years ago. The thing, but the thing that strikes me is how you know it's just so easy how for Jose to wind up. Everybody, yeah. well, that's him. Especially Venga. Yeah. Well, that's him. But but still, how can Venga still me. be falling for it? How yeah. can he still? Well, I think for me, for me, Mar- the polar opposites of this sort of like charm and mentality sort. Of. But for me, for, for me, Mourinho, Mourinho is like the Jim Cornette of football managers. It's one, of them, it's one of them ones. He is the guy you just love to hate. He loves it. He, sound, he seems like he loves the sound of his own voice, much like I do. Um, I know that criticism was coming, but much like I do. But it's a case of he just he gets he get he gets he grinds everyone's gears. Apart from Chelsea fans, clear. <laughs> what are you Paul's looking at? Name. What are you lot looking at? Really, seriously, what are you lot looking at? What Mourinho? Yeah. Do they, he's do like, so listen. He's so needle sharp. He's so needle sharp. Right. He see someone like me, you, anyone in here coming from a month ago. The reason, <laughs> listen. The reason he started on Wenger was to deflect attention from the despicable. T- yeah. yeah. You yeah. Understand. Yeah. So the ref now, he might even be thinking, hold on. I mean, it's, it's diabolical. Sure, so, more for them. Listen, well, back you have someone who I didn't well. mind. I didn't mind the tackle. Well, when there's something on your mind, yeah. right? There's something on your mind. Yeah. And what was on Kale's mind was um, the clump that, that the goalkeeper took. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so I said yeah. to my yeah. miss. I don't think you should. She went. What's all that about? So I said to my missus, "You're not watching the game properly, are you?" Mm. Right. I said, "What's happened? This the geezer who's on the deck, the Arsenal player. He's the one who's in the courtois in the in the in the movie and knocked him out. Yes, yeah, so yeah. this is our this is our some way it should. This is how it should, right? I'm telling you from a professional perspective now, right? This is how it should happen, right? And when so, if someone has a pop at you, mate, what you do is you leave it long enough for the referee to forget, yeah, and then you iron the geezer out, right?" And that's how it happens. That's what happens at professional level. You're going to we, say, do, we do your say it's a league level. Right? So, well. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying is at professional level, you, you're saying to the opposition, we're not going to be bullied, right? Now, Kale's gone in, and really and truly, there should have been six red cards in that game, and that was one of them. Yeah. Because when you look at it, it was it was half turned, and he's mm-hmm. coming off the floor. Yeah. Very high, very dangerously. Mm-hmm. And the definition of a red card is reckless endangerment on a, uh, towards an opponent. And not being in control. What, yeah. He's read the script. Mm-hmm. He's read the script. As soon as Wenger's like probably drawn breath, mm-hmm. Mourinho's read the script and gone, what are you doing over here? Bomb, 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 bomb. He gets the referee's attention. He gets the linesman's attention. All of a sudden, that split second where he could have gone bang red straight yeah, yeah. away it's yeah. gone. because yeah. he's yeah. gone, that's gone, that's dissipated. Mm-hmm. And Mourinho saved his player from getting a red card. He's turned the red card into a yellow card, yeah. and everyone fell for it. Something you Inclu- didn't... including including you. I said to my missus, "He's a wind-up merchant." The he's he's he, yeah, and, and all all I, turn, I mean, if it was me, I mean, if you're on the same level, if you're at Arsene Wenger's level, where you know. Uh, like Mourinho, he, he can he can afford to be. You shouldn't you shouldn't be. But he can afford to be dismissive and arrogant, and you know you're you're a, you're a mark. All you know you're a master in failure, mm. etc. All these little pops and jibes and da da da. His record against Arsenal or against Wenger is exemplary, yeah, yeah, and he, he's uh, as far as I know one of the few men to win 
three European Cups with three different clubs. Yeah. And it, and if he does it right this year, it could be a fourth. Do you know what I mean? What I saying, still see him as a short-termist manager, but hey, that's what, just my. What you're saying he did uh, there, and you're right, deflecting attention. Yeah. He did he did at least half a dozen times a season at Real Madrid? Oh he yeah. Did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, he burned bridges with everyone. Yeah. Again, again, a Cornet reference. He was like, he he didn't burn bridges. He demolished them. We like bridge over the river quiet. Eh? He was demolishing them. And I mean, I think, I think, I think even the Madrid fans, but like Marsa turned on him and said. That don't help don't help dream man in the way forward. You know what I mean? I mean at the end of the day they felt to have really any sort of worthwhile pressure. Yeah, I think it was what any, one shot on target. Any there? worthwhile attempts on goal. Yeah. You know, or worthwhile attempts on goal. So, you know, maybe um, But they kicked him a few times. Chelsea put put the you know because they don't well, some well, of well, your lot don't like it happen. Well it was a lot better a better performance from them. Also, to be honest, defensively, like we held, we held out for. Um, no, that ain't that can't be good. Bear, 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 bear off for like twenty-two minutes or so. Yeah, right? but it worked. Has Vernon's been. accusing your team of it. That can't be good. That no, can't be right. That can't be. If you, if the word's gone round football, if you put your foot in on Arsenal and they, and 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 they won't, you know, you can stop them getting into their rhythm. You know, you can make life easier. If you, that can't be right. Well, that's that's what got a, that's yeah, what it's what happened. Well, if you've been, if you've been sussed out, you know, in that really, way, you know what? Put, you, know what like, there, you know, I think it'll be a good sign for the Arsenal because they reckon Arteta hasn't got the legs, and Flamini hasn't yeah. got the legs to screen the back four, screen the centre off. Yeah. You know, I think it'll be a blinding signing. Check, yeah. Fabian Delph. I think I think it'd be to do that I job. Do, do just to do that right. job with regards to he's got quick feet. He's, he gets around the, uh, the football field. He covers the grass. He covers the ground. He closes people down. He loves a tackle. He gets his foot in. He gets in people's faces. Mm-hmm. And he could quite. It's quite conceivable that he could break up any attack before it gets right into the Arsenal centre backs. Because yeah. people are sussed out. What you've got to do? You've got to get. You've got to get draw the fullbacks on here, and you've got to expose Arsenal centre halves where they don't want to be. Well, like Mer- well, like Mertz, I think it was. Um, I think it was also the Costa goal where Mertz got exposed for pace. And well, we, it wasn't he looks Mertz, like it was Koscielny. Yeah, that's it. Koscielny, and it was supposed to be Mertz on the cover. And it's like, no, that should be the other way around. Yeah, the other one, Koscielny. Mertz Sack a goal in time. I'd be funny. Koscielny, he, he, he done what you teach a 14 year If you've got someone coming at you at pace, what you've got to do is, you've got, first of all, you've got to get your body shaped away. Not taking anything away from him, as old. He was unbelievable. He was magnificent. What you do, you get your body shape right, like in a split second. What you should do, rather engage in a tackle, and Keon highlighted it last night. That's why I like listening to him speak. And it, it, should, it should just be shepherded in, away from you know any sort of dangerous area. Yeah, uh, that's well, 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 force and force force and wide. Yeah, because they're not going to hurt you from wide. If you are going to get a shot off, at least you're giving the goalkeeper behind you half a chance. Mm. You know what I mean? The question I've got for you is also everyone talks about Ozil being played out position. And you know, with, with the way Arsenal play, that like, he should be playing more central, mm. not not on the left or not on the wings, basically. Yeah. Um, Arsene Wenger said about, I think, uh, um, just before the Galatasaray game, or maybe the game before that, yeah. that players like Ozil, you know, they, they they're not playing on the left wing, but they're like good enough to like you know switch positions. That's what they should be doing. Him, Ramsey, and Jack, they should be finding positions for themselves, yeah. not just to stick in one place, yeah. but finding themselves across the pitch and someone to cover him. So, yeah. do you reckon the blame is all down to? Arsenal players generally being played out of position. That's why they lose in these big matches. Apart from you know not being strong enough, or is it? I wouldn't comment on. I think Ozil's been disappointed since he's been here. That's one thing that's been said in the Sky Chat, and I can't even say Ozil's been shocked. Like forty two. But having said that, you've got to look. The only way you, you draw a comparison is if you say, well, it's similar to the Welbeck thing. You say, well, where did he play? Uh, I was when he when he was uh, abroad. He's doing the same thing. Can I just say, having watched all the Spanish football, then he's his his path. And Arsenal is following the same path it followed at Madrid. He did start brightly. He did start when he first joined Arsenal brightly. Yeah. And he was getting three games. Uh, <laughs> goal. Two he was winning plenty of assists, goal assist bets, and such like. Um, and then he faded and faded. I think faded. your problem is Jack Wilshire. I don't think I don't think he's over. I think it's no. Wilshire. Well, I, I think, think he's so. been overhyped. I think he's been overrated. I think all the uh, I've made coaching points with regards to um, uh, and. and it, could probably explain quite a few of his injuries, right? Uh, initially, he's, he's made such a massive, uh, unbelievable almost impact as a young kid. Rightly so, he was praised for it, right? But then he's gone from like an even kill 
yeah. and, and turning out performance after performance after performance. And uh, it's gone a little bit. I've found out a few things or I've heard of a few things going on off the field, coupled with the fact that I've said one of his uh, many assets is the fact that he's got this ability to run with a ball and glide past people. But I've said he's running with the ball, not only running with the ball in wrong areas, yeah. but also in those areas. If you're a forward or a midfield player out the field, you're going to take a chance and have a whack at him. Yeah. So secondly, what's happening is he's inviting tackles. And when you invite tackles, you're, you're what you're doing, you're, you're putting your body on the line, mm -hmm. which has led consequently to the third thing, which is his injuries, injury problems. Yeah. And if I was a coach, I'd say to him, I'll put him in the areas where he's going to do most damage. And, and I'm sorry, but regardless of what Roy Hodgson said and, and Ray Lewinton said and Gary Neville said, because they've got to back their players in, in public and they've yes. got to support their, their players and also uh, actually uh, qualify their selection. What they've got, you know, they've said he can do that job in front of the back four. I'd say, well, A, no, he can't, and B, he's wasted them. Yeah, I don't think he can do the job in back four. Not permanent. That ain't his game. That ain't his game. Well, watch him at the weekend. He was driving, he was driving forward. That's yeah. what he likes to do. He likes to drive forward behind. Pretty much where Ozil wants to play, yeah. But in 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 terms of saying that, I don't think he's as good as Ozil technically. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he's he's got a good pass, he's got a good touch. Like Ozil, he doesn't shoot. Ronaldo, so, said, Ronaldo says that you know, and he was he was again then back then furious that they sold that Real Madrid sold Ozil, and he said nobody has given him more assists. And that's why you need a player like that in your team because if he if he's got the opportunity to thread someone through and you know eight nine percent of the time well, that, you that give him but, but, but then to play, but then to accommodate him and play him in the middle who do you drop you've got a lot of midfielders who can play that number ten role just off a strike well, instead and of you four one, like can you instead like of four one four one the I'll tell you the ideal thing instead of four one four one is um, me I'd say with that with the players at your disposal I'd say a Christmas tree. Make you understand, sense. and then and then and then what you're doing, you you've got uh, you've got obviously well back as he stands at the moment. The form he's in at the at the point yeah. at the very top, right and there, then you've got you've got right like yeah. uh, maybe a bit of uh, pace and, and a mixture of pace and, and dribbling ability behind him, mm -hmm. which could include one of those two, mm -hmm. Rosa or, or Wilshire. Because I think the further they are up the field, the more damage they can do. Definitely. And that's not to say they shouldn't take resp uh, defensive responsibility. Mm -hmm. but all I'm saying with Jack and the problems he calls, I think he runs with the ball in the wrong areas. Mm -hmm. I think he invites tackles. And I think uh, more than anything, he's it, 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 wasting his, his uh, natural abilities uh, in, in the aforesaid areas. He should be doing damage in the top third, in the attacking third. Mm -hmm. That's just, just my opinion. You know what? Yeah, Mike Harneman's had his opinion as well. I mean, Mike, Mike, what were you saying in the Skype chat about Ozil, about Ozil, Wilshere and more? Yeah, well, I'm an Arsenal fan as well as Steve Lynch. Um, and I, I have been since I was little as well. Um, and basically, I think Ozil, he's, he, since the Aston Villa game, hasn't been up to... The performance just hasn't sort of been up to scratch. I think he's been since the Villa game, he's been declining. And his form's gone down, um, and I think how he managed the last 90 minutes yesterday, when Cazorla got subbed off after he was, looked like he was just getting into the game. Um, I, I don't know how he lasted the full 90 minutes because he would have been an ideal sub for Chamber, um, Chamberlain. And I think with the formation side of it, what you were saying, uh, I like that. If you're at home, that formation, I think, would work well. Yeah. I think you can drop someone like Arteta or Flamini because you don't need two holding players. That's right. Not at home, um, need that away, but not, I'd say not at home. Oh, don't even think you need it away. But, if but, you, but, but, away, but away, you'd want to pack, you'd want to pack the midfield just so that it does it, just so that the pressure is not as frequent. Now, you've already, on got, your you've already got that home. area, you've already got that area reinforced. What you're actually doing, if you, if you set up right and the team that Steve Bowl played in, you're deflecting the ball wide to deflect it infield again. Because the, de the definition of decent defending or good defending, what you do with good defending, right, is basically it, it, the opposite with it, this word that they've coined. This We used to say, make the pitch big. We used to say, open the field out. We used to say, create space. Now they call it expansive, mm. right? So the opposite of that is two things. Deny space mm -hmm. and make play predictable. Or keep play predictable. Those are the two mantras that, that, that any side when they're defending should live by. So what you're doing with it, with that Christmas tree setup is you uh, 
you deflect the ball maybe wide, you're encouraging the opposition to play it wide. Yeah. But then, like the team that Steve Bolt played in, they would force the ball across field and inside, mm. right? So, so your nearest player closing down would maybe bend his run in, right, to, to sit on if it's a left wing or a left midfield, sit on his left foot to force the ball inside. Right? And then it's it's about the placement of your second, third, fourth player furthest from the ball. You understand? Mm -hmm. And they should be starting slightly backwards of square. So then the same happens again. Mm -hmm. Right? And if you get good pressure, really good pressure, what we used to say and what we were taught to do in the promotion when you decide many, many years ago is it, it, is to get within blocking distance and then get up to the ball so you're actually getting the guy's head down. Then the next step is to make him to retain possession. All you can do is turn the ball out and roll it back. And then that's what you do as a team. When they've rolled it back, that is when you squeeze and you nick two, three, four, five, ten yards. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I think I think it's I mean they've got he's 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 created a squad there where the options are, 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 are unbelievable. Yeah. But no at way. the same time I just wanted to say that the Chelsea team, the way that they played, phenomenal. Like mm. when when you look at them defensively, they were compact. Arsenal didn't really do anything. There was that one bursting run from Wilshire that you could say stood out in terms of the quasi chance for Arsenal, and that was it. Mm. What else was there? Wasn't anything else? Well, it's one of them on one shot. Was it like one shot and target again? Kind of right? for itself, right? Aiden Hazard was absolutely otherworldly. The form mm. that he's in at the minute, brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely, he's white hot. Right? I don't know if where's that come from? It can only have come from the manager. Yeah. It can only have come from the I don't I don't know if it's Jose telling him, look, he kinda you know, this is this is what I expect from you. If it's EA Sports saying to him we're gonna put you on the cover of FIFA fifteen or a combination of all of that. But he <laughs> he's he's been absolutely he's been amazing. He has yeah, yeah. He's been one of the best teams at retaining possession in in the UK, if not Europe, at the Arsenal. Yeah. And what Chelsea did, you're quite right, they kept play very compact, but when they needed to they, they stopped from getting into any sort of rhythm. Yeah. So yeah, little break, little you know, foibles yeah. and little idiosyncrasies and little professionalisms, you know, body checks yeah. and like ups, you know, across the body line or a little flick of the heel. And and they, they take as they used to say you, you take one for the same, whatever. Yeah. But what you've done, you've stopped a prospective move or a prospective attack by by using spawning tactics. And listen, I want to say I, I, I ain't bothered. I, I, I love I love for the simple reason it might be the uh, the key that unlocks uh, European glory because yeah. of what we're doing now we're we've we've brought in a little bit of like the European game the foreign game uh, from your Spain your Italy's and whatever mm -hmm. and now you've got one of our clubs doing it yeah. you know what I mean oh, yeah. but I know that Hazard will take the plaudits but for me one of the biggest players yesterday was uh, Oscar I think he doesn't get enough credit. He put in an absolute shift. And you know what? For me, Chelsea deserved it. It's as simple as that. Yeah, no, that good reaction from last year, no? When, when Jose said, like, see you, because the World Cup's coming up, you've down tools since Easter, right? And he's probably given him an ultimatum behind closed doors. So now you've seen a great reaction from the kid. Good shout. Good shout. You know what? Yeah? Speaking of good shouts, remember vgtips.co.uk, <laughs> where you get your horse race, where you get your horse racing better and your football betting tips. And remember, the book is coming soon. The real sits, colon, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Get your pre-orders in. Members, remember, pre-order that at vgtips.co. Yeah. And tell them yeah. that we sent you. Exactly. You know, yeah, we are going to take a quick five minutes, not to powder the numbers or anything like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but- It well, depends, was... are you Robbie Fowler? Yeah. Oh. That's the... <laughs> I recently finished this book, quite an interesting one. But you know what? We shall be back. So Play it back. just don't do it in this way. <laughs> he is battering his own. I love it. We'll we'll be back in a couple of months. The football talk show that holds back nothing on opinions. Straight shooting, LJA. Hi, I'm John Sitton. Grassroots coach, Manisha Taylor. Hello, I'm Rob Burris. The G-Man. Samir Sawney of Motivate Sports and Fitness. Christian Carambeau. Matt Hodgson, director of the four-year plan. We the people. For the people. Jersey Fizzle. Your Monday night, night football fix. Make sure you join the revolution. The pitch is where we eat. The pitch is where we sleep. And the pitch is where we talk. Each and every Monday night of your lives at youtube.com forward slash pit store. For podcast links and information, check out our official website www.pitch talk.com. Your Monday night footballing fix pitch talk is brought to you by and in association with.
Facilities are provided for your Monday night football in fix by in situ. Create, engage, and inspire by visiting in situ.co. Simply exclusive entertainment. If you need a party or rave film, go to sxemedia.com for more information. Apparently Rich, simple yet effective web solutions to help get your company off the ground. Visit apparentlyrich.com for more information. And LJA Productions, the new blood in digital video. If you need a video filmed and or edited, check out ljaproductions.co.uk. <laughs> LJA Productions, the new blood in digital video, offering video production services such as video editing, video encoding for the web, including YouTube and Vimeo, audio recording, filming of interviews, promos, live events, and much more. Get in touch at www.ljaproductions.co.uk or twitter.com forward slash LJA Productions and let the new blood in digital video promote you. Pitch Talk is brought to you by and in association with... The one-stop shop for all your coaching needs, Motivate Sports and Fitness. Check out MotivateSportsAndFitness.com for more information. The new football culture magazine, Thin White Line. Check out thinwhitelinemagazine.com for more information. Storm FM with new hot releases played daily. Feel the boom at stormfm.net. Two girls with their Bonnie Scotty trying to cover as much women's football as they can. Girls on the Ball. Check out girlsontheball.com for more information. Hello, I'm Rob Perez. Grassroots coach Manisha Taylor. Christian Carambeau. Matt Hodgson, director of the Four Year Plan. David Goplin. I'm Rob Lusher. Andy Copeland from the Glemnet Southern Amateur League. Philip Wick, I'm CEO of 14. Former chairman of Ibis FC. Chairman of Alexandra Park FC. And you're listening. You are listening. You are listening. And you're listening to Pitch Talk. The only place to get your Monday night footballing fix. Because the pitch is where we eat. The pitch is where we sleep. And the pitch is where we talk. Make sure you join the revolution, the football revolution.
I love it. <laughs> You, you, know, you know, you know what? Yeah, we are, we all got to move into general general talking points in a second. But we are actually going to start general talking points, and we're going to start it with Gordon Taylor. Hidden, res- uh, hidden resistance to hiring black managers from 23rd September 2014. Football has a hidden resistance preventing black managers from getting jobs, says Players Union boss Gordon Taylor. The Professional Footballers Association chief executive said the Football League failed to fulfill a promise to discuss the Rooney rule introduced in America for football. The rule has been credited with an increase in black coaches in the NFL. You see so many black players on the pitch that we have two black managers out of my two, said Taylor. In a wide-ranging interview with BBC Sport, the Players' Union chief executive spoke about a lack of black managers in the English game and the difficulties in getting more homegrown players into Premier League teams. Um, now, we've been over the Rooney rule before, but the Rooney rule in basic terms was established in 2003 and named after Dan Rooney, the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers um, and the chairman of the NFL's diversity committee. It requires NFL teams to interview at least one black or ethnic minority candidate for head coaching and senior football operation opportunities that become available as a part of a transparent and open recruitment process. Um, football is our major sport, um, Gordon Taylor went on to say. It makes a massive contribution to the economy. We've looked at government for help with stadiums when we have problems with hooligans and safety at grounds and we set an example to the rest of the world um, we've got state-of-the-art stadiums we need um, to look to government with regard to greater equality in football at managers and coaches level and also with regard to youth development level facts and figures from the PFA um, the PFA says eight, about 18% of players on their coaching courses are from black or from other ethnic minorities there are 192 UEFA pro license owners in England and 14 of those are black coaches around 25% of players in the professional game are non-white um, it's quite right, range. Anyway, um, there were five black managers in English professional football um, last season, but of Chris Hewitt Chris Powell, Paul Litz, Chris Kiwami and Edgar Davids, only Powell now has a job. Um, Greg Clark on the 24th of September um, says the shrill voices of the vested interest will not force him to step down over the issue of black managers under representation in football. Clark was responded to former player Garth Crooks, who said he should consider his position following the claims um, the matter was ignored at the league's 2013 annual general meeting. There is not a chance the shrill voices of the vested interest will stop me continuing to campaign for a better lot for our managers, he told BBC Sport. However, Garth Crooks, who's a trustee of the key out anti-racism campaign responded by stating Clark had bottled it over the Football League not addressing the subject of black managers. We were given assurances that the debate would start at the AGM so imagine this the disappointment. Instead of Mr Clark explaining to us why it hasn't occurred he's making this lily-livered statement. Okay he's going back to um, Garth Crooks going back to the pirate day. Lily-livered. Um, but Greg Clark from the 30th of September has actually been accused of hiding behind excuses over a lack of black managers. And he was criticised for not raising the issue at the league's 2013 AGM. But ex-England captain Paul Lintz wants the Rooney rule used to stop the issue being swept under the carpet as well. So Trevor Brooking on the 1st of October, right at the start of Black History Month, coincidentally, Maybe not so coincidentally, actually. Um, so Trevor Brooking believes up to 20 English clubs could have black managers in place in the next decade. English football is under the spotlight due to a lack of black managers, with just two now employed by the 92 clubs. Brooking does not want a quota system introduced and believes the situation will evolve naturally over time. Given the number of players from all backgrounds, it would be madness if in five or ten years' time that's not reflected in the coaching. I'm sure we will have 10 out of 92, 20 out of 92 that over a period of time will be from different ethnic mixes. Um, Rio, actually, no, let's not go into that point. Let's hold, let's hold, let's hold on the black managers point. Now, first and foremost, I am personally, not, we've discussed yeah. this before in previous years. Um, big shout out to Football Unites Racism Divides, um, F- uh, F-U-R-D, third.org. Who um, who we had an interview with back in our early days, back in 2010, um, about the subject of race in football, and also and also in regards to the Rooney Rule that was brought up as well. And for me, I'm not in favour of a Rooney Rule for one reason, because the Rooney Rule basically it that it even even though it, it will guarantee one I mean, black two. or ethnic minority person getting an interview, I wouldn't want that interview to come at the expense of someone who's better qualified for a particular job. Simi- in, similar in some ways to, a, to affirmative action, where it's that 
you're getting kind of you're getting kind of a head start in in a in a way in a kind of I call it positive discrimination on the main show on that on Friday night. I call it positive discrimination. Yeah, and I'll and tell you discrimination you what, you're so spot on. You are so spot on. It's it's his right to a degree. Saying mm. that if you don't have the Rooney Rule, it's gonna it's only gonna help sweep the the, 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 the the problem or the situation under the carpet, right? But in many respects, you're so right, hundred percent right, because it's tokenism. Yeah. It's put, it's bordering on positive discrimination. Because the bottom line is, right, if you've got um, 50 candidates applying for a job, I mean, it depends how deep you want to go. Yeah. There ain't enough There ain't enough UK managers, mm. right? To begin with, there ain't enough UK, yeah. particularly there, in the Premier League. Particularly in the Premier League. Yeah. Then how much more deeper do you want to go, mm. right? I think there's discrimination against companies because we all sound like Barra boys and we all sound well, you like said it about the Scottish on your pitch meeting. well yeah that's right because well, yeah. because if you've got like a regional accent anything other than a cockney he's got a fair shout of getting a job because we sound like Barra boys and and and, and if, you, if you're a Barra boy it's automatically assumed that you've got limited intelligence mm. and you can't set up an organization you understand yeah, yeah. And so so other regional accents right, they, so how much how much deeper do you want to go now with regards to the to the black issue right mm -hmm. if you can get Gordon Taylor out the bed shot right yeah he's hearing more about it years ago now i've right? got you know and he's two yeah, lieutenants well, yeah it just so happens his two lieutenants are black bobby barnes what are they doing about it brendan <laughs> batson right so so he, they're not here to to state their case or defend it so i'm not going to go any further with that but i just want to highlight the fact that he's two lieutenants while yeah. he's been in the betting shop gambling fortunes away yeah. right this is the leader this is the leader of the players in this I'm, country I'm gonna come to right that, yeah. he uh he's two lieutenants what have they been doing about it? Now, with regards to what you're saying, right, I've got to fully concur 100% and I think you're 100% spot on. If you've got 50 candidates applying for the job and I'm a chairman, you understand? Yeah. yeah. Take, you've got to take this as, as I mean it, right? I'm going to look at the thing and I'm going to say, right, we've done, right, uh, John Sitton, no, he only played for Gillian Leitner in Millwall. Right, Paul Lynch, he's played for Man United, Blackburn, Liverpool, Inter Milan, England. Right, he goes on that pile, I'll go on the shit pile. You understand? Because I only played lower league football. Mm -hmm. Let's say the jobs at, um, uh, let's say Crystal Palace. Yeah. Right? Uh, so I'll go on the thing because it's automatically assumed because I've played lower league football and I won an England player. You could take it as read, wrongly, mm -hmm. that I would coach as well or know as much as because it's the same game son which is, uh, which is so so I'm so you well. could but you could take it as red at, yeah. the, at, the, at the top at the, at the, at the chairman and board level mm -hmm. they're going to say well john Sitton is a 500 game in the lower leagues market compared to paul lynch mm -hmm. so paul lynch goes on on the uh to-do list and i'll go in the bin but do you, you, do you know do you know what so that's, so, that's, so, that's, so that's, no, let me know no, don't don't really, interrupt me while i'm making no, 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 listen to what i'm saying yeah. So when they look at the kid, they look at the kid, they shouldn't see a colour. Yeah, of course not. You do, what you do is you see a man who's either competent or incompetent. You can see a man who can organise your club or he can't organise your club. Mm -hmm. You can see a man who can, who understands budgets and playing structures or he can't. Mm -hmm. You can see a man who, who can coach or he can't. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. And that's what I said on the Matty Ford thing. And 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 because he, he he's he's taking it to the nth degree when I've mentioned positive discrimination and you've worded it slightly differently but you mean the same thing and, and it's tokenism what you should say you should say these are the best 50 candidates mm -hmm. and if two of them are black tough if 25 of them are black so what mm. you understand yeah, of course so it's the two extremes and the bottom line is i'll set the matty fold on, uh, on top spot right they go through due process right because i think there's, an, there's another there's another strand of this mm -hmm. the more the more you raise it as an issue and the more different organisations keep sprouting up to lock horns and kick against each other, what? Well, not necessarily. Exactly. Not necessarily more becomes an issue. What happens? It becomes a side issue, mm -hmm. right? And it's deflected away from the fact it deflects attention away. Like I said earlier, Mourinho has been too clever for everybody. What he's done is deflected attention away from the Kale tackle. Right? The issue is whether you're good enough. Yeah. So it's no good deflecting away from the thing whether you're good enough by having. <laughs> Uh, anti this for that pro the other and blah 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 you understand yeah, so yeah, whether yeah. it's two or whether it's 25 it boils down to whether you've gone through due process and i said because he started bringing up alan sugar i don't know why but i said listen alan sugar i was born in the same hospital as him and, and anthony newley many many moons ago 
right? Now, the bottom line is this. If you take the time and trouble to do your research and you read Sugar's thing, he started off selling rags and secondhand, secondhand clothes. Yeah. Right? So the, he's got to where he is by doing what he needed to do, which is get your ducks in a we row. Pay, pay his dues, right? Right, <laughs> exactly. So what the players have got to do, whether they're black, white, Asian, whoever, they've got to get their ducks in a row. They've got to send their CVs in like everybody else had to, right? And say, I've got this qualification, that qualification, the other qualification. I've got qualifications coming out of my ass. I can't get any more qualified. I've also got a more illustrious playing career than whoever. You understand? Mm -hmm. And then it's about how you carry yourself in the interview room. I don't think it should be a race issue. I don't think it should be a colour issue. I think it should be a qualification issue no more. Because when you look at someone, you look at him, he's either a straight man, right? Or the man tells lies. He's either a knowledgeable man or the man's a dim low. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You understand? So yeah. if you're going to lie to me, it makes no difference to me, son, whether you're black, white or yellow. Yeah. If you're going to be, if you're qualified, I say lovely. If you're not qualified, I say don't waste my time. Mm, not good. Of course, that's, that's my point. Yeah. No, you know, I, I, I agree with you on that because at the, because at the end of the day, it's always brought it's always brought up as there's a lack of black managers, and this this is one thing that kind of annoys me because what about other what about the other ethnic minorities? There are so many other different ethnic minorities. Asian play Asian players are usually left out of this argument totally, mm. which I don't which I don't which I legitimately don't think is fair. It's just one of them one. But I mean, that, that's that's one of the major things that actually frustrates me. They always try and focus in on one group. You know where like, like I was saying earlier about about they try. You know where to kick it out. You know where kick racism out campaign was started. Yeah, Late in Orange football in the community. True. Late in Orange football in the community subsidiary, which was a theatre group, mm -hmm. and I was there on the day that it played in the House of Commons in mm -hmm. the run up to Christmas 1994. Right, that's where it all started. Right, so I know what I'm talking about. And when I said, when I said, and it's been confirmed last year, or mm -hmm. maybe the year before, Leighton Orient season ticket holders, right, from the local community, how many do you reckon? Out of the three and a half K hardcore. Uh, I'll, I'll save uh, the time, I'll save the time you're on there. Probably a couple of hundred. Eleven. Right? Now, marrying it in with that, right, you've you had or you've got uh in inverted commas a community that don't necessarily, not necessarily interested in rugby or football. Yeah. They're interested in their cricket. Yeah. Right? I.e. Uh, Asian community, Leighton, Leighton, Stone, Stratford, Forest Gate. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, 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 I was born in Acne. I'm a London boy. It's a running joke in the cab. You know, when I get a yank in, oh my God, are you a cop? Are you, you're like, I say, yeah, I'm an ethnic minority now. You understand? Yeah. For a laugh, for a yeah, cheap yeah, laugh. Yeah, yeah. But you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it's, I'm like, it's like ironic humour. But I said years ago, 24 years ago, what we should be doing is making inroads, yeah. like I tried to do with the Greek community, and, you said and I tried to make inroads with the Asian yeah. community. And then when one of their kids is signed schoolboy, then he signed YTS. Then, well, 17 and a half, this kid set the South East Counties League as it was then a light. We signed him pro. All of a sudden, they say, "Let's go and watch our boy." Yeah, you yeah. understand. Yeah, and no wonder your gates are, are not uh, are not improving. No wonder there, there, there's a, a lack of interest from the mm. local community. Mm. Yeah. You know, which numbers in the millions. Mm -hmm. No wonder they they feel uh, disenfranchised and they're, they're disingenuous towards mm -hmm. it because you've got you've got no they've got no representatives on the football field. Yeah. Now, with regards to Afro Caribbean players, that that was superseded decades ago. Mm -hmm. You understand by the pioneers like Clyde Best. You understand. Now, it's gone on again uh, with Viv, Viv Anderson becoming the first black player to represent England. Then it's gone on again, right? So now what I'm saying is, I think it just sh should come down to, I'm glad that he said it in, see, but I think it should come down to whether you're good enough and whether you're well qualified enough, not because of, uh, and I include myself in that, and I think I can coach, I think I can coach. Most people in football now, I could co coach their asses off at the football field, right? But what I'm saying is, my time's been and gone. I made a pig's ear of it, right? I was I was lambasted for a mad few minutes, right? Mm. But the bottom line now is, when it comes to people getting their chance, it, I think it should boil down purely and simply to whether they're good enough. No, I couldn't, no, of course. I mean, I couldn't agree with you more because you look at you look at Paul Lynch when he went to Blackburn. It was one of them ones. It was like, nah. I'd have a he, I, I would have had him stay at Notts County for another few years and keep cutting his teeth there, build it up. Build up. That's why I was I was so hoping I was so hoping. How do you think that Chris did? 
I haven't kept, I haven't kept much tabs on it. How do you think, Chris, you did at Newcastle? I thought he was doing well. I thought he was fine. I thought, I thought, yeah, what a run. I thought he was doing well. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Wasn't it? But then, he, how, do you he, think, he was, how do you think he did at Norwich? Maybe not so. Not so what so, right? I still, I still think he did at Norwich. No, initially, right. initially, with, but, with, then, with, but then when the he started to come on got, top, yeah. So you can only, you can only work. What happened? He got, I think, he, he probably, where Inch is concerned, he's probably gone in to the wrong club at the wrong time yeah, yeah. the blackburn yeah. thing was a joke anyway with yeah. uh, with with venkies who don't know well, well a, the, they don't know a hole from ear hole, but, but they can't put that down to his color because no, no, I, no, I, I, went, no, I went under the wrong club no. at the wrong place at the wrong time yeah no no, no that's not, not down to his color. Wrong that's down to him making a bad decision yeah because he didn't need yeah. he didn't need to take that on i said i would have had him stay if, if i was in his ear i would have been like no stay with knox county Build something. Well, that's, that's why. That's why. Chris Powell. Powell. I was well, just about. Chris Powell. I was just and, about and to say he Chris, Powell. Chris, Chris Powell. He did. He did phenomenal in it. Right. So, so what happens is a new owner comes in who don't know his off from his elbow from Belgium. Yeah. They make, uh, what are they for, famous for cherry beer, whatever. Yeah. Right? And uh, all of a sudden, Chris Powell gets his marching orders. He's one, but then he he he's, he's uh, resurrected himself for Huddersfield, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. so so, but he, but you know, shockingly. He's one of only, I think it's two. Yeah, yeah. Was it Keith Cole? Keith Cole as well. But, but for me, for me, the for me, the thing, the thing is, I would have loved to have seen Chris Powell. I was hoping Charlton got promoted. Yeah, because it a, because it would have been one of them ones where Powell would have built them up from League One into the Premier League. It would have been it would have been fantastic, and it would have been like no, he's not been rushed into that position. I think Paul Lynch was rushed into the black. Yeah, can't guarantee into, that, into the black. Can't guarantee that. No, no, of course you can't get. You can't guarantee it. It's a case. It's a case of the only thing for sure is nothing's for sure in football. Yeah. But for but for me, as you rightly said, if you're qualified for a job, just like just like in just like in normal in normal, if I was applying for Sainsbury's, I wouldn't want them looking at the color of my, uh, the color of my skin. I would want them thinking, right, all right, all right he's got previous experience. Yep, yeah, his experience is good. Let's uh, let's take him. Let's take him on. Yeah. That's what I would want to be judged on. I wouldn't want. But the thing is, if if a, if a load of black managers were not in on merit, if you're not in on merit, there's no point in being in, because of, because the fact of the matter because the fact of the matter is you're only you're only gonna get found out anyway. So like yeah. like Moyes at Man United, like what I said about Moyes at Man United. Well, it was a a great manager will still do great things with an average side, as Ferguson proved, but. You put an average manager with an average side, he'll get found out every time. If someone's not in, not in a in a team or in a position based on merit, they're going to get found out. And if anything, that damage is going to be even worse because that person's going to be looked on as, as a token. They're going to be looked upon as a failure. And the worst thing, the worst thing in the world is to have that stench of failure on you yeah. because you can't get that. Well, one. I can I relate to that. that. What I'll say there is, I think you've you've. What you've done, you've jumped two, two fences at once, right? There's a big difference between going in, like you've cited Moyes, so I'll use the same example, right? When three months before Moyes got the job, mm -hmm. I said, whoever takes this job, having been through a much lower level, admittedly, a much lower level, having been through a very similar situation myself where all you, all you see is satisfying your own ambition, your own ego, your own your own um, uh, sense of achievement, if you like, you know, because I always strive to achieve for me. Like, Moyes has done the same. He said, who turns the Man United job down? Well, I was like a lower league muppet. Who's going to turn down a job, uh, you know, the chance to turn the job? And the bottom line is, right, he's gone in. And I think it's fair to say, tying in with what I said three months, two months before he got the job, this needs bombing and starting again. I started need a players. Let's take the clear out of Moyes and his staff and all the conversation that goes with that and for them to bring in Van Gaal for them to actually realise that. Um, and they've come up with all sorts of brainstorming and spin with regards to the chief executive or the CEO who left with Ferguson. What a load of cobblers that is. What you're telling me is the only geezer who's got contacts in the football world with regards to setting up transfers. This is Man United for Christ's sake. So the point I make is, on behalf of Moyes and people like myself, is a big, there's a big difference between coming in and managing and coming in and performing miracles. Yeah, and that's where I've got to agree to disagree with you. Because I think whoever came in to Man United after Ferguson would have needed to have performed miracles. There's yeah, only one man in world football. But that's why a lot of people... There's only one man in world football. There's only one man in world football 
who could have done it, and that's Mourinho. Yeah, but, but, but the done, only thing is, what he would have done, what he would have done, he'd have come money. in and said, back four not good enough, goalkeeper okay, right? Back four not good mm -hmm. enough, or back three plus ever who's, who's getting on, he's 31, 32 yeah. nearly. Centre halves are on their knees, right, through injuries and old age. The right back's not up to Man United standard. Fletcher and uh, Carrick, they're, they're uh, on their way over the hill. Darren Adams, right. Fletcher. Uh, you've, got the, you've got the other fat guys who couldn't walk Parker past the kebab shop, Anderson. <laughs> right. he's, he's out as, right? That leaves who? That leaves Rooney. An RVP who basically won the Premiership almost single, sorry, Premier League almost single-handed, mm. right? And uh, was like the, one of the buyers of the decade. You understand? Yeah, so yeah. so fundamentally, you start in 11, they've had to pull skulls out of retirement, They've had to get gigs playing until he's 40. Yeah. What kind of nonsense is this? Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So basically, what I've said, you're left with you're with, you're left with eight eight shirts. You've got to fill. Yeah. Do you, do you understand? But coming 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 back coming back to coming back to the black managers issue. For me, it's for me it's a case of what what I see with UEFA, FIFA, UEFA, FIFA, or NFA, or as I like to call it, the moronic trinity. It's a case. It's a case of these guys. These guys are always throwing out half baked. You know the quick. You know the quick pro quo that you questioned me on last time we spoke. Mm -hmm. I was gutted with my with my response. I was gutted. Uh, disappointed. I was so disappointed with myself. I said the FA shambles. Right. I stick with that. Mm -hmm. Right. FA shambles. UEFA racist. FIFA corrupt. That yeah. should have been my one word responses. Because there's been opportunity. Now, what I'm saying, if it's endemic at that level, yeah. right? If it's endemic at that, and you've already you've already got a shambolic organisation running football in this country, yeah. how big an ask is it for them to totally change the mindset of all the football clubs when in Europe they won't kick clubs out yeah. for the Champions League for racist yeah. filth, yeah. you understand, and yeah. noises because there's too much money involved. Cut. That's yeah, it. Isn't yeah, that exactly yeah. what we were discussing yeah. last week with the Chris Samba thing? Yeah. It's a case of, like, and, and once and once again, my my moronic trinity, as I like to call it. The fact of the matter is, they're always a day late and a dollar short. They'll punish someone and then rein it back in. It's like, no, if you're going to make a punishment stick, punish uniformly and in a draconian manner. That's how you've got to do it. That's how you've got to do it. But the powers that be, there's too much money. They have three billion pound TV deals. They're not going to want to jeopardize that. But the thing is. As I, as I always like to say, football is a microcosm of society. A lot, a lot of people still run on age-old stereotypes and generally sweeping generalizations. And a lot of people are lazy. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of people are lazy and won't look up, won't look up facts, won't look past headlines. As as you as you as you know, John with Orient Cup for a while. A lot, lot a lot of people didn't even didn't even bother looking past that. Yeah. We a lot, a lot we, of people think he was sacked because the program went out. Yeah, he was already out of work. Before the program, yeah, of course, I was, I was, yeah, of course. I was, I was aimed out the door in the march, and the program didn't hear till October. Yeah, so well, I mean, it, well, the editing process always takes a few months. You always got to look back, and it's like, there's one myth. Yeah. yeah, so you've got, got pre preconceived it. ideas on people. Yeah, we we yeah. we we did, we debunked some of those some of those myths on Pitch Talk Mitch, Mitch John said, and we debunked quite a lot of myths. Mm. Have a look at that on youtubecom forward slash Pitch Talk, and also so, so the, book, the book, the book, the real sits. <laughs> A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Pre-order that at VG Tips because at the end of the day, tell them the reason. It's, it, exactly, it's 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 worth it. But I said coming coming back coming back to the issues, the football the footballing world has had has had many chances to be the standard bearer and the shining light, but it's failed. It's failed on the, it, it, has, it has failed. Not even not even the black community or ethnic minorities or Asian people or anything like that. It's failed the game in general. When you Let got, me ask you a question. When, wait, 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 wait. When, when, you've got, when you've got corrupt morons running the game and ruining the game who won't step aside, you look at black... Even even look at look at the thing recently with the reports. Maybe um, maybe, 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 maybe black players are lazy. Garcia, maybe, maybe maybe that's a, that's a right, fair. So that's let me come in with a question. Let me come in with a question. Oh, sure. One of the top three pundits on match of the day. Who is it? Who always makes good coaching points? There's a, there's a couple of them. A couple of them. Jason Roberts ain't that bad. Right. So, so Jason, so Jason Roberts, we agree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I was going to say, is in my, is in my top three or four. Yeah. Right. Black Yeah. Who's the top in the top three broadcasters on radio, particularly talks football that, that, that basically talks about football. I think, I think, 
he's selling himself short and i don't think he's showed any balls at all yeah yeah i think he's gone for the easy route whereby they go you know what this media punditry is a dodder mm. you understand because what you can do you can you can philosophize and you can you can give um, opinions and you can give theories on how a football club should be run yeah, cool. and you can give theories and philosophize on how football should be set up and what players should and shouldn't do with no fear of the consequences mm. you understand mm -hmm. so what i'd say i think colin Moore could quite conceivably as i said on friday night in the early hours of the morning saturday morning it could do probably run a club standing on his head with an eye patch on mm -hmm. you understand because to me it comes out with so much sense and mm -hmm. i'm in my cab driving along and i'm thinking spot on well said good boy good stuff lovely well said that's it go and give it to him do you know what i mean yeah because he comes boom 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 and he rattles off all these things and he come out with an expression on the way up the only, only thing that lets him down What's he's that? starting to go in actual fact i find it ironic he, he he hands over to Danny uh, Danny Kelly on a on a Saturday night after call Colin Moore and he says hello Dad right and I think it's ironic because he's starting to go down that road right the uh, I, what you down with Uncle Tom kind of no 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 but Dan, Danny Kelly when I, I had a row with Johnny Vaughan on radio and I, and I said you're from the Danny Kelly School of Broadcasting and he went what he said I like that and I said yeah you probably modelled yourself on it I said because what you do you ask the question and then you either answer it yourself or you talk over the answer. And, and and Vernon come out. What tell him the same? No, I just well, obviously I've produced many of such programs myself, and it's I'm, I used to scream in a presenter's earpiece if they talked across the answer in seconds of the first bit like we've done here tonight. <laughs> and, um, more heat, you know, more heat, you know. You're radiating more heat than right. you are light, and that's what Stan's guilty of doing because he he. he you're only on air for a limited amount of time. Yeah, of course. So you want your, he wants his say, want, I want my say, otherwise we're wasting our journey. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, yeah. So what happens is that we, we've all, we've all, we're all guilty of it, right? You try, and I've been guilty of it as a coach. You're trying to show people, right, and by uh, how bright you are or how in tune and how in touch you are. And what happens yeah. is you make the mistake of trying to get too much information out too quickly. Mm -hmm. You understand? And it loses its impact. Mm -hmm. And there's a consequence that thing he said, it, well, it, it radiates heat without light mm -hmm. you understand and that, and that, but but back to the to the to the black manager issue yeah i'm telling you that stan in my experience colin Moore, could probably manage a football club quite comfortably mm -hmm. you understand and and and, 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 and so so what i'm saying yeah. to you, so what i'm saying to you is it do they go the route of a lot of other players whereby they say you know what this punditry is a doddle making a few coaching points on on match of the day mm. and 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 behaving in like a, a quite sort of gray you know mundane moribund manner is uh you know uh, i think it anodyne uh, this is where i want to jump in because the way i the way i view it here is it like that um the likes of stan collie more um you can say stan collie more ian right play, players of that sort of caliber yeah yeah is it because of the culture that they have growing up in football where you know racism was about um yeah yeah and you can't say racism isn't there because it still is they're, they're calling they're calling it out and saying it is there so isn't that part partly a reason why they won't feel to no. go into management because they don't feel they have any chance whereas whereas mm. whereas other black players before them have gone onto tv and become pundits they've seen them do a good job they're thinking well you know what this is what we can do whereas where else is what they're better you know, off financially they're not, they're seeing, better they're, off. they're not seeing black managers make it make it and thinking well this is something that we can't do and as for like you've got the Rooney ball I I I too I don't agree with you know getting the handout that, that's not how I work at the end of the day work. if you've got something like the Rooney sorry sorry I'm not, on, if you've on. got something like the Rooney rule out there yeah maybe you said the word positive discrimination mm. well may, maybe that so not can, more. Well, it's an oxymoron, but maybe that's something to ignite, you know, a different way of thinking, especially with, I just say there is a racist owner or yeah. something of that sort. Yeah. The more black faces that he sees, the more opportunities that he gets to see black faces, Asian faces, wherever, companies, whatever, yeah? Yeah. And the more he gets to hear from them and hear their plans and see what they want to do with the club and take the club, it's like, all right, you know what? my discrimination i've got to overturn this because i just invited bob here and bob didn't know fuck all language <laughs> language <laughs> so it had to be one of the hosts as well he invited patel or um patel yeah 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 y
Jamal, and Jamal's giving him the worldly sort of, yeah, I'm going to take the club to this heights. We can't do this, but I know what we can do to go forward. Do you, do you reckon it can spark that sort of? Yeah, I think it ties in with what Paul Walton said on the same program I was on. I think if nothing else, the more people you include, the more people you not only include, but include in the interview process, the more people you include in the selection process, I think the worst case scenario is you're, you're broadening your, your base of knowledge. You're broadening your, your canvas. Yeah. Simple as that. Well, so your network of contacts as well. I mean, at the end of the day, just in case, like, like, like let's say, let's say with networking, let's say with networking, for instance, you're not going to just network in one area. You're going to try and cast your net out as far and wide as possible, mm. and that's the whole point. You might, you might be looking, you might be looking for a video editor, but then you might meet a couple of quality photographers, someone who does brilliant audio, and it's like, okay, you might not need them people at that particular point. But you might need them in future. You might need them. You might need them down the road. I'm not saying that because I'm a video editor by trade, but I'm just saying that as a, as an analogy. But for me, again, with with the powers that be, Gordon Taylor for me frustrates me, and I've said on numerous shows that dude only comes out shooting his mouth off at certain times. Now with the Suarez thing, he was he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Who's this? Saying to um, Gordon Taylor. Tyler. Taylor. He was he was coming out. He was coming out, going, yeah, 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 about Suarez thing. But then when it came to the Terry thing, he was silent. And it's like, yeah, you're supposed to you're supposed to be a shining light, a shining example, and you're picking your spots. It's it's you're 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 actually not helping. If anything, you're exacerbating a problem and making things look even worse. Which which to me is sad. And the powers that be always seem to do this. I mean, we were we were debating we were debating last week about um few, no it was a few weeks ago about um the whole Man City and PSG getting reprimanded for financial fair play yeah. where they got a punishment levied on today yeah. and then it got drawn and then it got kind of drawn back a bit yeah, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then you had yeah and then, and then you had what's it Palmer straight away that's out Europa League Torino replaced them. It's double standards, and because double standards not only not only in football, football's a microcosm of society. You got double standards running right in society, but football as a microcosm unto itself, you got so many double standards running. The game has so many. The game we love, we wouldn't be here otherwise. The game we love has so many is riddled with so many problems. But there are so many people who lack the testicular fortitude to change anything. There's no wr within there. Yeah. Um, but the fact, but the fact. It, it it just it just it just saddens me and it frustrates me at the same time. You probably see my blood pressure going up, but yeah. maybe that's a good yeah. thing. So you've done you've done you've 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 Yeah. And I'm, I'm the only one. I, I, I I'm the only one solution. I'm the only one so far is contributing anything resembling a solution. That's what that's what so I what's that's your solution? I, that's what I wanted to that's what I wanted what's to your solution? to. Now, for me, in terms of a solution to this problem. There has to be outreach, as you mentioned earlier, in terms of the Asian community, outreach into communities. Entities such as Motivate Sports and Fitness, who you guys saw on our ad break, and it's one of them, one of them was, they go into communities and do community outreach projects. They go into the communities and saying, right, what, what's, ha what's happening here? What can we do to help? A lot of people are going, oh, yo, yeah, Rooney ruled this, Rooney ruled that. Why not ask the people that it that it affects the most? What do you, what do, you, what can we do to help? That's, I think, that's the major question that is that is legitimately not being asked. And also, if you're gonna if you're gonna say something about one case to do with racism, you gotta say something about all of it. Just like I say with punishments, punish uniformly and in a draconian fashion. You've got, you've got to be you've got to be even-handed you've got to be even-handed you can't just target the black community you've got to target the asian community you've got to target other communities as well scottish irish whatever you've got to be like what like one of our mantras for this show inclusive not exclusive for me community outreach is the key if you understand the community you can do a lot more to help it rather than sitting on top of Mount Olympus, throwing down half-baked plans like um, like the Premier League B teams thing to help grassroots football. Grassroots football recently from Sport England had had 1.6 million pound worth worth of funding cut, and you've got you've got you've got amateur league teams such as the one I play for Ibis. We're we're we're, str we're struggling in terms of numbers because people are just dropping out of the game. 
And one of the one of the major reasons apparently is poor facilities, according to a Sky Sports report we read out a year ago. So that's that's what I that's what I feel needs to be done. More community outreach projects. Because I said to help to help someone, you've got to understand them first. But speaking of, you know, the community outreach stuff, motivated sports and fitness are actually um, promoting a new event and free street games and it's multi sports. So it's not just about football, it's about sport in general in Southall uh, next week. So if you're in the Southall area, get down, get involved. And this is what we mean about the community outreach aspect. You know, you have to go and go into these, you know, little hubs within the communities themselves and get those people involved, like you were saying. At that point, you're going to have more people from those local areas attending the games, all over. I think, I think there's a consequence what will happen is it'll be like a, an evolution as opposed to immediate revolution. Yeah. And I, I think people, I, 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 I met the guy a couple of times and I saw him on a late night program about literature. I think, I've got to be honest, someone like Garth Crooks will do you um, more harm than good. Uh, that's just my opinion yeah. with regards to taking things forward. Not now, I think evolution as opposed to revolution is the way. And I think closer to the truth will be someone like Trevor Brooking. Purely and simply for the reason that there are so many. We spoke about it earlier. You, you, you've got to look at it like this. Apart from uh, the best singers, the best boxers, the best athletes, the best trumpet players, the best jazz pianists, the best whoever, <laughs> or right the way through history, are all black. Right? If you start coming down to um, how many players are going to end up as professional footballers who are black, and I think what will happen, that will set a precedent for the natural uh, selection process for coaches and managers. Purely and simply that. Because it's like I said many, many moons ago, if you look at all the European nations who at one time or another have been, and I don't want to bore you with an history lesson, but at one time or another, they've all they've all taken their turn in being an imperialist conquering nation, right? But when it comes down to it, with there's a couple of exceptions, but most certainly where England and, uh, uh, and France are concerned, they wouldn't have been out with end of a six aside competition because all their all their represent all their representative players are, are, are black from former British or or French colonies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think as it starts to seep in with regards to more players uh, representing clubs, which it already is, mm -hmm. then as a consequence, you're going to have more players who, 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 who are black who represent the clubs who are going to think I'm going to take my coaching badges mm. then the more that take their coaching badges and get their ducks in a row which is what I said mm. right then the more they're going to be obliged to um, uh, send in an application mm. and show a bit of ambition instead of settling for punditry yeah. and, and take a job and then it's down to you can only leave it down to the person I think who, who's, who's basically um, well, just to expand on that a bit because I know that um, Vernon actually made that point as well about uh, former players, you know, from other ethnicities, just to lump everybody together because I think, you know, focusing on just black, yeah, that's because uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's far no, too small. It's, it's not fair. Um, are comfortable with the punditry stuff, with the radio stuff, with you know, other TV bits, or even doing stuff for the clubs that they used to play for. It's not very interested. comfortable, they're, they're, you know, they're getting enough money. And as you say, there's a, a total interested. lack of interest, but I think, um, you know. Instead of having a, a rule where we say, right, we want um, a minimum amount of persons from other uh, ethnicities to apply for coaching jobs, have a minimum amount of people from other ethnicities have to actually go and do coaching badges. Mm. Encourage more of them to take on coaching roles. Well, encu well, encourage is the key word. Encourage, not force. Yeah. But because I, you I, might be forced, because with, say, a Rooney rule, you might be forcing someone who doesn't want to go into management to go into it just to fill a quote. Are you are aware that it's only uh, interview. Yeah, 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 interview. yeah. In, in, interview, interview is like a release clause. It doesn't guarantee, it doesn't guarantee you're going to buy it. You're going to buy that player. Release clause basically infers that, all right, you're allowed to talk. Same the same way same way with you same way the Rooney rule would get you to the interview process. Yeah. But if you ain't if you ain't good enough, then you're gonna fall flat on your face. And you really should. But for me, it's for me again, it's a case of understanding. If people if certain people don't wanna get in don't wanna get into management, mm. then don't force them. No. You can you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. Which is true. But I also think that as I say, 
and I would even just expand it to, to all elder statesmen at clubs, mm-hmm. generally speaking. Yeah. So players who are like 32, 33, get them or just explain to them that the possibilities of them staying in the game and being relevant to the game mm-hmm. might not necessarily be on the pitch playing week in, week out. It might be working with these younger players in the reserves or the youth yeah. teams and teaching them what they've learned over playing the old airplane career Doing to help them. Or yeah, yeah. Or I, I, I was hope, I was hope. Remember what you said a few weeks ago when Lampard went to Man City yeah. and Lukaku went to Everton. I was hoping that Lukaku would have stayed at Chelsea with Drogba coming back, study under the learning tree of him. Yeah, that would have been fantastic. And I was hoping. I was I was a little disappointed when Chelsea let Lampard go because I was thinking there's a player who is respected to the hill at Chelsea and justifiably so. Breaking Bobby Tambling's record, that ain't no small feat. It's like when, when, when Ian Wright broke up, it was Capacity's record. It was that, like, yeah, no mean, no mean feat and should be applauded for that. But I would have loved to have seen certain certain players, certain players like your like your Hazards, your Oscars, who are young, who are still who are still young, have the prime of their career ahead of them, have a decade of a career ahead of them studying under the learning tree of someone like Lampard who's been consistent over the, over a decade. It's one it's one of them was the the older the the older the older gener- the older generations have so much to teach the youngsters. I mean but I mean I mean from from what you said on interviews John it's a case of you've got you've got your betrayed generations, the the youngsters and also the elderly. Yeah. And it's I said football society in the, in that way again, because instead with that with that surprise of Lampard going, it was like I, I, I still think Chelsea should have kept him and have and have, have him working with the young. Well, to give him another year of bedded him as a coach, better you bet him yeah. in as a coach. Yeah, no, I that's, said that's that. Exactly I said that on Twitter well. at the time, and I said it against. Yeah. Him. I don't yeah, give it him a because not apart from anything exactly else. Listen, thing, yeah. apart from anything else, right? What you don't do is you don't. Um, you don't uh, take the chance, which they have done, and it looks like it might blow up in their face. You don't take the chance of uh, weakening yourself and adding to someone else's strength. Yeah, of course. You understand? So you keep it. You say, look, I'm going to give you a year, another year, right? Cutting money, but, and it's a massive but, uh, uh, even though I'm going to use you sparingly, right? The massive but is that money can be made up at the other end with regards to uh, incentivizing it and yeah. also the dangling the carrot of a job yeah. As soon as you pack up playing, yeah. there's a job here um, as as one as a member of staff. Yeah. Because yeah. that sort of uh, know-how, you've got to tap into it. Yeah, and, of course. And, and, from, and a million percent, what you don't do, you don't see. There's too many people in football. They're paranoid. What they do, they stand, surround themselves with sycophants. The the one or two clever ones, and one of them was Venables back in the day. He surrounded himself with a football's brains trust because he had confidence in himself and in his own ability, yeah. and he wasn't threatened by it. You understand? So so the the real the real smart cookies, what they do is they surround themselves with as many good people as possible, and and, and I think that's what that's what I've done with him. Just like just like the rest of you. I don't understand. <laughs> you, you know, you were saying about. Um, it's versus you and a playing career, right? I don't think, I don't think uh, whether somebody gets a job as a manager or not should be based on who they play for. Uh, well, no, I'd, I'd rather, no, of course not. I'd rather have my child coached by you than Paul Ince any day of the week. Can I just say, as a supporter of a team outside the Premier League, I'd have an anybody but Paul Ince rule personally, because I don't. I've sat amongst fans here, obviously, mm. of his, and I have. I do not understand why at all. Uh, well, because, fans are, well, fans of football, not necessarily fans, because, not necessarily fans of Paul Lynch. Because he played at all the level you said, and you only played at the level you did, yeah. does not make him a better coach. No, than no, you. of course not. Look at, look at. Well, well, it's what, well, it's one of them. Was sometimes, sometimes it's, sometimes it's the average, the average players that make the best coaches. I'm astonished. Mourinho, Const- Mourinho, and Wenger. I'm being, constantly being astonished that Paul Lynch really gets interviewed. I did really play. Yeah. yeah. But but look at but look how good look how good they are. Look how good I think, I think like when you when you're a less than elite player, mm-hmm. when you're a less than elite player, right? And we found out by the time that I was about twenty that I was going to be a less than elite player after a lot of success early. Um, you tend to examine things more. Mm-hmm. 
whereas elite players are dismissive and take certain things for granted. You say they would you say they kind of fly on the seat of their pants because of well, because because they can afford yeah, because they can afford to because they because, and, and, and as a consequence of that, well, sometimes you're forced to take a long, more profound, more in depth look at, 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 at football and, and at yourself and at. Uh, you know, like playing structures. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 that's sometimes that's a if you're an elite player, that can be a minus because you haven't paid that much attention to it. It comes to you like, uh, you know, I don't know. See, I don't, I don't think they ask. I don't think I know that Milan Mandrich, when he was in the dock with Harry Redknapp, asked Harry Redknapp who he should get as the next manager of Sheffield Wednesday. He was thinking of getting. He said, "I think I'm going to get Paul Ince." And Harry Redknapp said, "No, don't." Whatever you do, don't get four ins, right? For whatever reason, he told him not to. Now, Milan Mandrich, you know, sort of asked Harry Redknapp's advice, but a lot of these people running the clubs don't go to the people with the know-how who've been in the yeah. club, in the in the football for a while, and say, "What about this? Do you think I should?" You know, not asking an established manager what they think of. Yeah. Yeah. Should I? He talks a good game. He's right. How comes he ain't coached? <laughs> Or manage. I know he's done a bit at MK Dons for a while, yeah? Yeah, I think he's doing badges. So he's still doing his badges. Yeah, so how old is he? He's, he's, he's as old as me. So why no. would you start doing your badges when you're nearly 50? It's not. Do you, do you understand? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying, when he packed up, when he packed up, instead of doing the, the like the pikey bit for an extra bit of reddish, you know, Celtic, West Ham, over the hill, past his best, you know, he should have been like, I know he came into the game late, but after seeing what the damage he'd done for Arsenal, you say, you know what? I'm, I'm a football man. I know what I'm doing. I'm a top draw finisher. I'm a top draw forward. I'm a good athlete. He probably knows how to live right and he knows how to live not so well in terms of like habits off the field. So I can steer these kids the right way. And it's like me, I say in my book, you know, certain people like differences with, um, like some, uh, to totally uh, separate issue and a different colour of Trevor Putney, he would have made an ideal coach. Because he had the ability to gloss over disappointment, great sense of humour, uh, a great feel-good factor, and football knowledge. But you couldn't talk to him because he, he, he used football as a means of conveyance to, to, to promote himself, uh, put himself up there financially and, and socially. There's a difference, a big difference. So what I'm saying is you either get on, you jump on one train or you jump on the other. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and the other thing is what I think people should take into consideration. And if he is taking his badges, I'll say, well, you know, I'll say good luck to him and I'll say, well done. But it's probably 20 years too late because your optimum time at the time as a coach, I think after 55, you're all punts in a living. Between 35 and 55, when you talk about coaching, you're talking about getting around the football field and being able to do what the players can do. I wouldn't ask a player to, to head a ball or volley a ball or control a ball or pass a ball or run to a position, or close down, or jockey, or get a tackle in, if I couldn't do it myself. Mm. And I think there comes a certain, like, I'm there this month, I mean, I'm like wherever I am, four or five stone overweight, but this month I'm 55, and I think 50, that, that's your optimum time. So, in answer to that, you know, I'm saying to myself, I think, A, he should have been a coach a lot sooner, and I think he's probably wasted a lot of his youth and a lot of his life in what I call the afterlife, which is when you come out of playing, and, 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 and B, you know, there's a good chance that um, unless he knows something we don't, that, that he's probably passed his sell-by date in terms of being able to get around the, the football field and coach how you should coach. That's just my opinion. I don't, yeah. standing on the touchline, pointing and blowing in someone's ear saying, tell him to do this, tell him to do that. That's not coaching. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But well, no, we're all different. We're well, all different. Well, well, theory and practice are always, are always two different, are always two different things. So you, might through, but you might not be able to, it's one of them. I mean, it's, you there's, you know, a classic case that uh, um, John knows that because he's broadcast with him, you know, where, what will Danny Murphy do now? Mm. Because, He's proved himself as a broadcaster, was superb in the World Cup for the Beeb. Yeah. They'll be offering him stupid money to stay with the Beeb. Or is he going to make that fatal error of, of going into management, mm. um, thinking that, okay, if it doesn't work out, I can always go back. back into yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, And they probably will take it back. I said it publicly, he should have done. He should have shot. I thought he showed as a player. And he ain't a big guy, Danny. And, and uh, he obviously would have been a bit more pumped up as a player because obviously he would have done the appropriate training. So he would have been maybe bigger across the shoulders, but upper body strength, strong legs, etc. But he ain't a big guy, right? 
but he showed a lot of balls when he was a player, wanting the ball in tight areas, yeah. uh, getting involved in physical confrontation. What I actually said, I mean, I said he's got to show the same balls now as he did when he was a player and apply for the Fulham job because I think it was a win-win. I think he's well liked at Fulham, well respected, yeah. and I think that would have given him a head start at a club where the only way at this moment in time is up. Yeah, do you know but what I mean? After yeah. McGaff, immediately after McGaff, but he's, opted, but he's opted to be on. He's the, opted for the he's gone for the safe option. He's opted to be on the panel and people who select him. Yeah, what's that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I'm sorry, I love doing the McGat. Week in, week out. I love doing the McGat. Right. Literally, just, just to bring it back to that yeah, point, yeah. I think, uh, back to the original point about black players and, and going into management, I honestly think the, the biggest obstacle that they have is that all of the punditry work and media work is not only a safer option, but currently a more attractive option. Yeah, exactly. Especially with the revolving door of management. Yeah. Every one of them or someone will get put in a job, but they're not exactly going to last. I've hired them, you know, year. I mean, I've booked, hired, paid over God knows how many years, decades, those people to do those jobs. Nine out of ten will stay if they if they keep the gig, at, where it's B, ITV, Sky, it doesn't matter where it is, it's easier. There's nobody shouting for your head and calling for you to be sacked. Mm -hmm. The money, in many cases, is better. Mm. Um, you turn up, you spout a few lines. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing mm -hmm. like as incisive as this man. <laughs> Just cliches in the main, yeah. and you leave, yeah. and nobody's nobody's shouting abuse at you. Mm. And you turn up next week and you do the same thing. And the money, because of the industry I work in, um, it's very good. Mm. So why? Yeah. Do you man? Was there anything on social? Yeah, we've got we've got we've actually got something from Big T actually. What's up, Big T? Um, always throw them teas out for him. He said, "Great show so far, guys. Keep it up." Got a serious question for everyone, but I'd like to hear John's insight to this as well. I'm doing a dissertation on the safety and well-being of sports journalists, and I was curious on what John and the rest of you thought about this topic. Um, do you think that football journalists? Um, own, own welfare is being questioned both whilst at work and on social media can more be done to protect these people both online and, and during their line of work what are all of your thoughts um, thanks in advance Tom Hewitt aka Big D I wonder who he's referring to I mean it's just, just kind of a, a question a question in general but but, um, you but, yeah, but yeah do you think football, football journalists um, own welfare is being questioned at work and on social media and can more be done to protect these people both I don't understand the question well, if I'm honest yeah I know Paddy Barkley wrote recently about uh, he wrote a good article on the Bleacher Report I think about the fact that it's you know yeah he's, he's not social, a, social media he's not alone in thinking it's not worth going on Twitter anymore or writing anything or whatever because yeah. he'll say something you know about Liverpool about Arsenal about whoever and it's a lynch mob on Twitter well Colin Moore's had that problem directly yeah, yeah. A, a lot, a lot, a when's lot the last of time when's the last I mean these people are so self-righteous aren't they um, when's but, the last time a computer threw a punch uh, John, well, it's the keyboard warriors yeah. <laughs> exactly so that, that's my point but you so, think you think all sports journalists are uh, supporters with pens as you well they are <laughs> Supporters, John. So, 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 journalist and they say well they're not even football fans what kind of bollocks oh. is that language, is, language, uh, language, language, whoa. yeah but again he's winding me up now no, 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 they no, shouldn't no. even have the job no, no. Oh, no, no, if you don't know what you're looking at if you don't know what you're looking at how did you get the job why have you got the job I think that's right in the week right there no, no yeah, yeah definitely, you, you definitely. Say, no, no but it is you it is say that's not fair yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, just throw that little grenade. Come on, Mr. Right. 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 He's shooting, he's shooting right there. But you know, man's asking about wealth, the welfare. Yeah. yeah personal welfare of the journalists I don't, I, I'm not aware of any sports journalists that have been beaten up outside no they haven't no they haven't no they haven't but at the end of the day they can pretty I mean sports some sports journalists can pretty much say anything they want and get away with it a lot of people can say what, there's, whatever there's a, I know I know I mean I know personally there's a there's a few who have regretted going on Twitter mm -hmm. uh, who have left it some have been tempted back um, some 
I mean, their mistake is, in my opinion, is if they're going to write something, you know, even, well, you even moderately up, controversial. Don't don't look if you if you you know if you're going to get loads of abuse, don't mm. bloody read your Twitter feed of yeah. abuse. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Certainly, yeah. as we all know, do not reply to yeah. people who abuse you on Twitter because yeah. yeah. that's just opening a can of worms well, forever. But I mean, there are. I think there's more and more, you know, the senior sports journalists who are thinking twice now about mm. having anything to do with social media because, mm. you know, they're just, it's, it, there's just, there's a venom out there. Yeah, you've know? got a lot of people yeah. trolling. Yeah. They're trolling as it is. But you don't have to say anything. I mean, I've done it on Twitter I've seen, and I've looked back at what I've, and I thought, well, where was the offence taken in that? I, mean, yeah. I just, I don't, you know, it's gone right over my head as to what mm. I've said that was, so you end up, the danger is you end up saying, well, you end up becoming, a, a, you know, an Alan Shearer of Twitter. You say, you come out with cliches and say... Well, like, well I'm more like Michael Owen. You speak you just like, as Piers Morgan likes and mock him all Speak the time. a lot and say nothing, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not aware of of them being threatened yeah. physically. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember uh, infamously uh, my one blog about the whole Luis Suarez, Patrice, everything <laughs> that went out on Here is a City. The amount of negative comments, and a lot of them were aimed towards me. I had one guy say, yeah, I saw you in the street. I'd knock all of your teeth out. Right? And the thing was, the blog was in, it wasn't serious. It was never meant to be serious. It was literally yeah. just the comment yeah. on what had happened. Yeah. And I think the thing that really happened to upset a lot of people was I was saying, well, you know, let's forget formal process. Let's just put them in the cage. Right? Under UFC it was totally, or Pride totally rules. Totally time, tongue in cheek. Under oh. UFC or Pride rules and had the two of them sort it out themselves. Since has had it in the past, he'll probably tell it. Yeah. See what happens. See what happens when you step away from a situation. Now, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to rescind and to, and to retract some of that statement. Right? For the simple reason, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give it to journalists and, and why they got because <laughs> because I've got to say, there's people in football. Who don't even know what they're looking at. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, yeah. It's people who have got managers' jobs, coaches' jobs, first team jobs, youth team jobs, reserve team jobs, academy jobs, and they don't even know what they're looking at. So so I apologize to any journalists who don't know what they're looking at. Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? Yeah. Do you know what? Why why the one you know thing what? I I personally love a good rant, that's why I love Jim Cornet. So you know what, yeah? You guys want to play again? That wasn't a rant. You get you got you guys want to play again? No, I'll, well, I'll want to talk about the book. <laughs> oh no, oh, no, we will. Oh, 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 oh no, oh no, we will. We will talk about the book as well. Then was um, the real sits. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Pick that up at vgtips.co.uk. Pre-order it now. now. Get your pre-orders in. Get your pre-orders in. Has anyone got? Has anyone got a stopwatch to play to play this game? Has anyone, has anyone got a stopwatch? <laughs> give me, give me, give me, give me sixty seconds. Give me sixty seconds on the stop. Okay. Oh, no. so we're gonna play a little a little quick game before Mosey and on. Um, because yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a little fun. Remember, this is your Monday night football and fix the football talk show that pulls no punches and holds back nothing on opinions. Because the pitch is where we eat, the pitch is where we sleep, and the pitch is always is where we talk. Well, oh, that was, have you got um that's that, that's that stopwatch up for us, Jersey? Because right. I'm just yeah, you got you got, you got it, man. But all right, all right, give me give me see, all right, give me sixty, give me sixty seconds starting. Okay, I'll call the start. But basically, what we want to do is a game called Name That Team. Now, what we'll do, we'll give you, we'll give you sixty seconds, both of you at once. We'll give you sixty seconds, and we will name a ground, and you've got to name the team associated who has either played or plays at that ground. Sounds pretty simple, right? Yeah. As many as you can. Yeah, so it's as many as you can. In somewhere in, in the Kazakhstan, or <laughs> as many as you can in sixty seconds. So, Jesse, if you want to, if you want to start, if you want to start that. Oh, he's looking you're, over your shoulder. At the answer. Answer. Don't do it. Don't no, 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 no. We ain't got the answers up. We've already got. We've already got the question. Yeah. Is what is what them ones. All right, yeah. Jesse, start start that clock. Yeah. All right. Burnley. Cool. Turf Moor. Burnley. Vicarage Road. Watford. Oh, uh, Old Trafford. And United. He's looking at this. Roots Hall. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. King Power Stadium. I can't, see, I can't see the questions from here. King Power. He's looking at the questions. <laughs> He's already looking at the questions. Okay. Right? Hey. I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm like 200. All right, we'll start again. We're, oh, we're going to start again. You've got to turn it away for us so we can't see it. Because he's going, oh, no, 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 I'm over here. No, 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 no,
Yeah. You're ready. Oh, for almost. You don't have to go close. Almost. Almost, 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 almost. Because <laughs> um, we got a lot. Because we got a lot. <laughs> all right. 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 All All right. 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 All Blackburn. Blackburn. Bloomfield Road. Blackpool. Selhurst Park. Palace. Palace. Liberty Stadium. Leicester. What? Uh-uh. Liberty Stadium. You can pass if you want. Swansea. Craven Cottage. Fulham. Upton Park. West Ham. West Ham. St. Andrews. West Ham. Filbert, 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 Filbert Street. Filbert Leicester. Street. Leicester. White Hart Lane. Tottenham. Kenilworth Road. Luton. Um, Riverside Stadium. Oh, it's what's his name? Middlesbrough. DW Stadium. The what? DW Wigan. Stadium, Hillsborough, Wednesday, Griffin Park, Brentford, Brentford. Highbury, the Arsenal, Arsenal, Valley Parade, Bradford City, Oakwell, Barnsley, and um, sorry, um, where are we going? Brisbane Road, Orion, Loftus Road. Road. He's been Kipia. he's a reporter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Stadium, Stadium MK. Oh, I don't know. Who could that be? Stadium MK. Give it. You gotta give me the answer. Stadium and MK. Stadiums. Yep, Main Road. Manchester City. City. Elland Road. All right, that's time. It's a draw. There we go. There we go. We've got quite a lot. We're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna count that up, tally it, and we'll give you we'll post we'll actually post the results on the website. There's been a lot more. We'll, we'll, we'll post we'll post the <laughs> we'll post the results you, you, on you, 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 you were listening to the answers, you was only listening to it. Your question So we're be, gonna we're gonna tally it back on the podcast. Your question and we'll give, been, and we'll how give many of the rounds did Sits play at? Uh, but you know what? It is one of them ones. We, we'll come back on the podcast and see play play how it. many, how many we play downfield, got. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, it is time for us to swing on in terms of the show. Home straight, home straight. So we might actually have to skip on. We might have to skip on a little bit in terms of segments. We're going to skip straight into. <laughs> Stuff of the week. Injury time. Go forward. Fergie time. Hey! Do <laughs> 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 That's disgusting. <laughs> this is Monday night. <laughs> and it's Pitch Talk. Here we burn the world crowd. The bus is doing it. And also John Sitton. Nothing great with this little trick. Go to BT Tips. <laughs> Feel also powerful. Betty Hat Tips. <laughs> and also <laughs> Sitz <Sid's> Park. <laughs> This ice J for these icy J for you. That's not funny. That's not funny. That's not hey, funny. Back with ten B. That's not funny. You've got a strong leather, the boy. He's got the gallon of Lucas. He ain't been out yet. I'm not finished yet. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Um, stuff of the week. Let's have it. All right, Delia. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, <laughs> let's go for um, where is James Peck these days? Um, yeah, but let's go for team of the week first. G Man Jersey, who are you going for team of the week? Mm. Uh, I'm gonna go Man United just because, okay. despite all of the defensive throws, they still somehow getting the job done. And they're, and they're actually trending up. What a stupid answer. G-Man, <laughs> <laughs> G-Man, who are you so, Go on, you say Arsenal. <laughs> and I'll say Chelsea, and he'll say Sheffield Wednesday, and he'll come out and say <laughs> Cobblers and say Liverpool. <laughs> what a waste of a segment, <laughs> isn't it? G-Man, who are you going for? Who are you going for, Team of the Week? Um, he'll break his heart to say Chelsea. Condor. Yeah. I can't say Chelsea because they never were really the team of the week. Um, of course, it was. Top of the table clash. That's the word I was looking for. 2 0 is competent. <laughs> You've got professional 1 0, competent 2 0, oh, emphatic. That. You said that. Did yeah, I? Yeah. Emphatic 3 0. Yeah. Right, just um, give you a little reminder. Yes. <laughs> for their competency, I'm going to say Manchester City. 
Okay. No that's, an, that's, an, that's an interesting one. Well, so, since who are you going for? I'm going to say Chelsea without a shadow of a doubt the performance in the team of the week because Manchester City have to, have to, took them ages to break down Villa and uh, in the end, okay, I suppose that little bit of extra class told but I thought Villa were unlucky not to come away with something and it's just the extra bit of class told. So really and truly, when you look down the results, you know, in terms of top of the table clash, you know, teams who are hovering around like top spot European places and the rivalry and everything that that engendered, I'd say Chelsea. It's out there. I'm, so, I'm sorry you're wrong. <laughs> 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 Who's that for, the biggest club in Yorkshire, Sheffield Wednesday, for getting um, another, yeah. point, another point off a uh, minor club called Leeds United, who they beat 6-0 last season, Wednesday beat them 6-0 last season. And uh, congratulations to Stuart Gray and Lee Bullen for doing such a good job at Sheffield Wednesday. Good and, and, proven, and making them hard to beat, unless, of course, they're playing Manchester City in, in the Gaffer Cup, in which case they get thrashed. I heard Goody Gun Drops. I feel like watching Snacks and lots of I love those. Goody Gun Drops. Um, yeah, Br- hey, hey, Brick Top is a fantastic character. I love it. Um, but um, team of the week, I'm going to go to Paris Saint Germain beating Barca yeah, 3 2 there without Slatan. Good call. Oh, line. sorry, I didn't know it extended into Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you could you name know, anything. Anyway, you know, if you, you want to know, Chelsea. Chelsea. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, professional job, <laughs> one mil away, sporting Lisbon. Do you know <laughs> what nemesis means? <laughs> The righteous infliction. No, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll go into the whole quote. Uh, <laughs> I'll, do the, I'll do a good bit. The last bit. The last <laughs> sentence. I was going to say brick top. I, w- I would, but it's one of them ones. Oh, you. Um, so that list of questions you sent me, really, yeah, what, that was just for just to bring down another rainforest. So. Oh, no, oh, no. We'll, we'll, come, we'll, we'll come to those. Oh, we'll come to those. Um, let's go. Mike Harneman, who are you going for? Team of the week. Um, I'm going to say Man United. I think their result against Everton basically just proves that they probably will be up there this season. Um, and <laughs> yeah, running. leave it with them. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's a good shot. That's a good shot. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Talk top... about opinions, even if yours, yours is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and the only opinion that doesn't matter is the one that goes unexpressed. That stretches a little bit still. Um, Tom Wood, who are you going for? <laughs> Team of the week. Tom, so, you were? Yeah. Is there anybody there? Uh, he's he's so, put in pitch talk for bringing two special guests on the show tonight. It was good to hear their opinion. <laughs> oh, that's nice. So he's he's got he's what, got what a lovely gesture that is. P two. Jamie Bailey, team of the week. Jamie. Oh, right. Yeah, sorry. Oh yeah. yeah. yeah sorry. He lacks his dramatic pauses. Yeah. Who are you going for, team of the week, I don't Jamie? I really like my dramatic pauses. Just been no talking from me tonight or t- at all. All right, well, well, you're on now. Who are you going for, Team of the Week? Um, I'm actually going to go with. Uh, well, it's been it's been um, a team that you don't expect, but uh, I'm Frank, uh, Frankfurt. Okay. Two uh, two wins in two wins in two. No, nope. I'm on that. Russ Vernon, Team of the Week. For me, Liam, I'm going to give an honourable mention to Juventus for their unbeaten start to Serie A. But for me, it's Leeds United under 21s totally demolished Doncaster tonight 6 0 in the under 21 developed Cup League. 6 0 is a score you're familiar with, isn't it? I love it. I've just got to say to Vernon, it was a good performance on Saturday from both teams. And if it wasn't for Westwood in the Wednesday goal, I think we probably would have won that one against Wednesday. Miles better chances than you you scored on the. Against doing a play. I was on a plane, yeah. so I'll take the word. <laughs> no, you know what? I watched the Tina Pub. I watched the Tina Pub. No, Russ, we, we got to swing. Russ, we got to swing on, dude. We got to swing on. We got to swing on. Let's go. Um, let's go. Goal of the week. And mm, goal of the week's a hard one. Jesse G, man, you want to take yours? Goal of the week. Um, <laughs> I will go with uh, Ross Wallace. Burnley. Um, yeah. I think yeah. when when you look at the timing of that goal. And then, of course, the technique. For me, personally, I think um, Kasper Schmeichel gave him a lot to aim at. But... No, look look ridiculous at what, amount to aim at. But when you look at where the wall is, right? He's, he's honestly saying, right? If yeah. you can get it over the wall, if you can, if you can, get, if you can do that, then fair enough. Yeah. And the quality of the goal speaks for itself. So, yeah, Ross Wallace, the bandit. I'll go with it. G-Man, no, honourable mention to Ross Wallace, but 
I don't want to say it, but I have to. I'm going to have to say Costa's goal because like, <laughs> the ball from Fabregas yeah. was just yeah. Really yeah. awesome. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, yeah. I, g- I give that an honourable mention, but I'm going for Torre. Um, Torre against Aston Villa. Fair enough. No. Took it, took it by the, took it by the scruff of the neck. Yeah, they did, they did Huffing back off him. Yeah. But, they, they, but at the end of the day, it's one number you can only beat what's put out in front. To As quote, to quote, to quote <laughs> it's, it's one of, no, but no, but it's one, no, but it's one of them ones. At the end of the day, some people wouldn't have even tried that. So right, same with Adam Lallana's skill, skill, little silky skill. I'm surprised you go for that. So, I was going to go for that. I'll go for that. Go for that. Go for that. Costa for me, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with Costa. I do wonder what's going to happen when he gets injured, if and when he gets injured. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still think Courtois is the best re-signing, so to speak, yeah. at Chelsea yeah. this season. Yeah. He's going to be... Yeah. I'm, I'm glad he's getting his chance in the first uh, But what happens when, if, if and when Costa gets injured for four weeks or six weeks? Then what? That will be telling. Well, I think one of the reasons he bought him is because uh, I don't think he will. <laughs> I don't think he will get he'll, he'll manage it. He'll, he'll, he'll really manage, manage it. I'll think, well, yeah, apart from that, which is nothing more than common sense, it's not genius. Yeah, of course. It's just, it's just leaving a player uh, to rest, replenish, and maybe just do sort of uh, uh, a stretching program. But I think one of the reasons he bought him is because he knew that he'd be able to handle the rigours of the Premier League, mm-hmm. um, coupled with his experience for athletic. In the Champions League, and so yeah, you know, I think, think, think this guy looks like he's going to be able to handle anything that's thrown at him. You going for him as goal, as goal of the week? Yeah, I've got to fully concur. I'm afraid. I hear that. <laughs> I hear that. Um, Russ Vernon, goal of the week. My goal of the week, Liam. An honourable mention to Chris Maguire against Leeds was a good finish Yay! into the bottom corner <laughs> for the weekend. But for me, is Going to have to be Benucci for Juventus. Fantastic goal on the volley. Yeah, I saw that. Um, Jamie Bailey, goal of the week. Um, I'm going to go with a, um, a team goal from Toulouse, which beats it. Um, it's the only goal against Netian. Um, and believe me, you guys have got to see it in order to show that it's not just in the uh, the Premiership that they can actually play football. Yeah. Hey, hey, post us a link, David. Post us a link. Um, I know that certainly too well. I see, Tom, I see enough La Liga to know that. <laughs> Tom, who are you going for? Goal of the week. Diego Costa. Oh, yeah. Got another one. Got another one. Mike, Mike Harneman, goal of the week. Yeah, um, for me, I'm going to give it to Michael Boswick, Peter, bro. Yeah. Well, um, we we've been more obscure than that. Big shout yeah. out to Ibis Football Club, by the way. Um, it's one of them. I'm mm, no, I, I actually can't reveal that on air yet because it's not guaranteed. Um, let's go for we don't team, we don't go player of the week, player of the, player of the week. Um, G Man Jesse, who are you going for first? Player of the week. Player of the week's a tough one. Yeah. Uh, so um, tough, he's going to come up with another Man United one. <laughs> <laughs> no, honourable mention to David De Gea and Anthony Real. But I have to give it to Pappas Dembasiso just because, as I said earlier on in the yeah. show, the guy, he's, he's the lifeline at Newcastle right now. Mm. If Alan Pardew stays in the job, it would be because Pappas Dembasiso banged in all the goals that's been required to get the points. Good shout. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've got to go to our Man United player in Di Marie because I reckon he literally saved Man United's blushes. Mm-hmm. Good deal, that's a good call. No, no, no. But I don't agree, I'm going to go with Fabregas because I think the level of expectancy uh, with regards to the uh, input in performance for a new club against his old club and, and the rivalry that it, that it, it sort of entails, I, I thought it was fantastic. Um, and he gave another passing masterclass. I hear that, Vernon. Who are you going for? Hazard. For me. No, I've got no, uh, You know, he's bounced back. I don't know how long it'll last, whether it'll last, he'll last the distance, but um, he's come back from a dead, being a dead man, virtually, and he performed wonderfully at the weekend. I heard that. I'm going to go with Stephen Fletcher. No, those two goals off Very the so long out, he, but he's. To get a phrase that I like to coin, he must be as, as rusty as an orange nail. 
and to come back with two goals. Stephen Fletcher. I didn't know we could look like Frog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Oh, he's terrible. He's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, player of the week, Tom Wood, who are you going for? Stylian Petrov. Okay. Okay. Do you want to give the reason for it? Yeah, because he made his comeback in uh, his uh, come back to play some festival football, uh, football after uh, recovering from leukemia. Good stuff. Great shout. Good great, shout. great shout. No, that is actually a great shout. Uh, Mike Harneman, player of the week. Yeah, i am um, got two. I'm going to go with you guys for what you've done with this show tonight. I love it. I think it's really, really good. Um, I've enjoyed it a lot. Um, second one, I'm going to go down Tom's route. And I'm going to give my player of the week to Mitchell Cole. It would have been 29 today, who uh, obviously passed away last year. Another great shout. Another great shout. There's some top, there's some top, you got some top listeners, didn't you? Yeah, damn right. Yeah. <laughs> the PT family, man, it's bang on it. Um, JBK, who are you going for? Player of the week. Um, player of the week, I will probably go with, um, I'll go with three, uh, obviously Mitchell Cole. I'm actually going to go with um, a, a, a match as well, um, Brentford and Reading, for literally uh, giving a minute, a minute silence for Alex, Gro um, Alex Gross. And um, the third one will probably be, uh, well, it's going to be a bit of a surprise, but I'm actually going to go with Neymar, despite the fact that he's he's had his injury. The guy doesn't look like he's actually got, an, he's had a back injury at all. No. Uh, Good shot. Oh, good shot. Um, Ross Vernon, player of the week. For me, Liam, I've got quite a few. I'm going to narrow it down, though. Now, narrow it down to one. Narrow it down to one for time. Narrow it down to one, please. It has got to be Chris Dawson of Leeds United played magnificently tonight in the under 21s game. <laughs> All he's doing is Leeds. I love it. All he's doing is pointing the guns in Leeds. Um, flop. Of the week, Jesse Gino, who are you going for? Flop um, of yeah. the week. Who messed up most this week, in your view? Honorable, honorable mention to Manchester United's defending, um, just because it, it's still not—it's not where it needs to be for me. It's not—it's not—it's nowhere near as as good as it could be. Um, in terms of an actual team, though, I would have to say to be absolutely controversial. I would give it to Arsenal. Just because I personally felt, given how they performed midweek, that they would have had more of a fight against Chelsea. And they weren't they weren't at it at all. They, just, they weren't at it. No, very good shout. Very good shout. Gina, I know you're going for flop of the week. Leading into the same match, I'm going to give it to Martin Atkinson. Because um, I think his refereeing performance was poor. Touching on something that Sitton said about um, Mourinho did the deflection. Yeah. Uh, a referee of his standard should be able to look past that. And when you're you're missing you're missing fouls like that, then in that in that case, then that that is very poor referee. But not just that, to deal with the issue with the yellow card, he should have given Oscar in the first half, yeah, which he didn't. He gave him a warning, but beforehand he gave Chambers a yellow card for a first time challenge, mm. yeah, which didn't make sense because <coughs> when Oscar he pointed all around the pitch and done all of this one two three four five six referees usually pull out the yellow card to say. That's why I'm giving you the yellow card. And that, that's why I'm giving it to Atkinson. That might be sour grapes, but it is what it is. Yeah, there's, no, there's no might about it, really. He's got to take them red-tinted glasses off to get his up. I mean, it's talking about... It's talking, he's forgot Danny Welbeck, two feet off the floor, yeah. by the way. Right? Yeah, right. He's forgot the second book of all, and third book of all, and fourth book of all with Callum Chambers. I didn't yeah. see it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he went finger on it. I love that. He what? He, he went, went Wenger. Wenger on it. He went Wenger on it. I did not see it. Wenger's <laughs> never done it. He went Wenger on it. Yeah, when it went. Top of the week, I'm going to give to Kuba. Yeah. I yeah. thought they yeah. were a spineless, gutless, uh, no energy, no enthusiasm, no fight, no, no, yeah. no will to win, no competitive instincts. Um, you can't even get round to ability. Um, and, and, and the opportunity to win a game. If you, if you, <laughs> If you're not coming up with a bare minimum prerequisite, see, I'm one being fitness. I mean, it's it's just like the some of them. Are, I mean, they look like they've they've been in McDonald's all day before they. But you know, 
mate, the uh, Tarraps and all that. He's, but maybe he's, maybe that's what Harry's doing, putting out, putting out the message. He's showing everybody what he's, what he's having to deal with and how bad it is. And it's, uh, it's an old mantra from years ago that Wilkinson used to do. Sometimes you've got to let them play so they can end this. Yeah. Well, you give a man enough world, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you absolutely the worst team around at the moment i mean over the last seven ten days newcastle's defense midfield and defense appalling but you know at least they've got some sort of result of the weekend uh qpr absolute shambles i'm gonna third that i'm gonna third that notion on qpr and actually give them the rain minus off. five stars minus it's five it's stars the crowbar, yeah. <laughs> no no of course, no of course because because at, at, at the end, because at the end of the day, you got you, for the for the reasons that have already been articulated. I mean, QPR fans must have been. What the hell is going on here? Wait a minute! And I don't like. It. I don't like it at all. Almost QPR sorry. fans must have must have been thinking it. I almost feel sorry for Fernandez, Tony Fernandez, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, he was the one who lasted out of all the owners, and he's having to deal with the crap. How yeah. much money is that Which man? Is sad, got really? Spend? How yeah. much that, is that? How much money is that man got to spend yeah. for, to get a team that's going to stay in the Premier League for heaven's sake? You know what? Oh, if I was in Fernandez, <laughs> you know the, the you know the agency he's done business with. Mm -hmm. I'd never do business with him again. Well, a lot of them are Harry's agents. Yeah. Well, no, Harry inherited a lot of the, a lot of the rubbish that was oh, there last year. Oh, yeah. I know they've had a big turnaround of players this year, so so Harry carries the can with the players that he's bought in, not not with the players he inherited. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and 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 up to that point, um, I, I thought like they they was well, you know, it's well documented. Mm. I thought they were just as if not more shambolic than, than they already are. Now you look at it, and, and he's thrown millions upon millions at it, and uh, like Harry said, he's, he, he had his he's had his pants pulled. Yeah, but not just that, I think he's had his bum smacked as well. <laughs> now there's a pic now there's a picture painter. <laughs> you gotta feel sorry for the man, because it's just you know, it's, it, you want to return on your money. Yeah. And, and like, you know, for it's like I said to you, any footballer and any football team, the the, the bare minimum prerequisite, organized, motivated and fit. What's behind the revival? And I don't I don't think QBR any of the three. What's behind the revival, West Ham? I'm mystified. Well, it helps, it helps when you get give three points on a play. Do you know what I mean? But I think, also, yeah, also I think it, you know what well. I think is? I think it's a happier camp. Yeah. From the outside looking in, it seems more relaxed than okay. a happier camp. <laughs> and I think he's got rid of a couple of, uh, oh, right, they've gone on, they've done well elsewhere, like like the hold the army's done well there. Mm -hmm. But he, they obviously, there was a bit of friction there when he was at West Ham. He, he's made a couple of, uh, I mean, especially the goal, I see. Um, what was in the goal of the month for the yeah, short, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. short back yeah. lift, yeah. You know, what I mean? Rock top, you know, he's made a couple of uh, good buys. Yeah. Alex Song, we, we yeah. said when that happened, it was like, Yeah, that's a good one, that's a good long time. He knows the premiership, he knows yeah. the premiership. You know Premier, what? Sorry, Premier League. <laughs> you know what? Premiership's yeah. rugby. You know, what? let's jump, let's jump into the Skypers. Mike Harneman, flop of the week. Yeah, for me, it's going to um, be the two teams that basically ruined my derby weekend, and that was both Arsenal and Stevenage for, well, the, the results on that side of it, really. Um, and I'm going to give an honourable mention to another player who basically flopped against his former team as well, uh, Jordan Rhodes, missing the penalty against Huddersfield for Blackburn. I hear that. I hear that. Ross Vernon, flop of the week. Who are you going for? My flop of the week is going to be going to offer Jess another draw of the week and in one of the last match but their manager Billy McKinley has tonight resigned as Watford head coach yeah. Watford have told Sky Sports News and the club will now begin a search for a long term appointment meetings are ongoing to find out who will take charge of their next game Since after the international in the break no, I've, already, I've, already, uh, I've already had the misfortune to manage one, uh, one train wreck I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to put him for another. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say, the Pozzo family breezed in, and it was that. Oh, oh, oh my God! Uh, they abused the loan market, then the loophole got closed. So it's like you can't do that anymore. Um, you know what? Let's go for Tom Wood. Flop of the week. There were teams that lost. <laughs> Can you narrow that down to one, please? What do you say? All the teams that lost. All the teams that lost. Yeah. <laughs> oh my That's fair answer. That's a fair point. Oh, okay. This is one of them ones. Yeah, screw it. Um, Mike, um, sorry, Jamie Bailey, flop of the week. Best of the years to put them, yeah, 
wait. I'm just going to go with flop of the week. I have to go with um, Arsene Wenger. Um, as far as I'm concerned, he still hasn't made the right decisions off the field as well as on it. And as much as he's turned Arsenal into business, it just doesn't look like he's doing anything on the field. On the field. So, as I've said over the last few years, the dude needs to go. What if I put this to you? Four-one Galatasaray. What if I put this? Still needs to go. One, one result doesn't change my mind. Well, like I said about that. Yeah, the FA, you, you, you had a different tone on the FA Cup, cup but hey, it's one that was. Let's leave that one. Since one FA Cup you, doesn't you, change my mind either. Yeah, no. Nothing. It's, nothing it's, will change nothing, my mind. Nothing change my mind. Yeah. Hey, I've I've seen I've seen enough I've, I've seen enough um, happiness in the, in the Arsenal ranks, and I've seen enough um, sadness in the Arsenal ranks. Yeah. I'm actually looking at a picture yeah, of the Invincibles at the moment. You don't know picture. what sadness is, man. You don't know what until, <laughs> you, until, you're down, until you're down with a dead man in League One and League yeah. Two in the Championship. You do not know what sadness is. <laughs> All right, you, know, you know what? You know what? You know, what? You know what? Yeah. Hey, Jamie, 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 we got, we got, we got, we got cut you there, man. We got cut you there. They'll just, put up, they'll just put up a statue to make the one. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, it's what it's all was because of time, because of time, maybe we got to end, we got to end that one. Meters running in the so, cat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're paying. <laughs> hey, yeah, the, I'm the meters, you're paying. I was, was going to say <laughs> the, the meters running and last tubes home are not comfortable yet um but no it's, it's one of them ones where you know what yeah it's been a lot of fun tonight it's been a yeah, lot of fun i've given flu to somebody <laughs> <laughs> i don't know me. Look, yeah. you see that <laughs> away. Ah, he's just got over a boat about sorry <laughs> he's got over a boat. <laughs> order a boom, a boom. oh my god you know what it has been a lot of fun we've been sitting here with vernon grant the ghost writer of john sitton's book what's the name What's of that book What's the, what's the name of that autobiography and where can we get it? Let us know. Let us know. It's They're, The Real Sits. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. And it's www.vgtips.co.uk. Get your pre orders in now. Tell them that we sent you. And of course, if you want horse racing tips, then of course, we'll better tips. VGTips. Exactly, exactly. You know what? You know what? It is, as I said, it is one of them ones where we do have to vacate the place with a haste. Let's 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 give them all away. Let's give the YouTubers a wave. It won't be seen on the podcast, but let's give the YouTubers a wave. Oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> because it is time. It is time for. Well, well, it's the big show. Hi, I'm John sitting there with Gavin, Liam and Joe on Pitch Talk. The football talk show that holds back nothing on opinions. Hello, I'm Rob Perez, Christian Carambu. Grassroots coach, Manisha Taylor. Matt Hodgson, director of the four-year plan. Samir Sawney, co-founder and co-director of Motivate Sports and Fitness. And you're listening to Pitch Talk. The only place to get your fix. The pitch is where we eat. The pitch is where we sleep. And the pitch is where we talk. Oh, never know. It's Monday night, and this is me in pitch talk. Thank you, Mr. Fish. <laughs> you knew that was coming. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> At least I'm not singing Wallace well, the Big Slow. At least I'm not singing that one. That one, that one reference. But you know what? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, straight shooting LJ, the G Man, and Jesse Fisk were proudly brought to you, especially proudly tonight. The football talk show that pulls no punches and nothing on opinions because the pitch is where we eat. The pitch is where we sleep. And the pitch is where we eat. We've had, a, we've had a lot of fun here tonight. We've been serious. We've been jovial. We've had banter and everything else in between. We've had opinions. We've had knowledge dropped upon us. We've had, we've had pipe bombs dropped as well. To coin that over there, everyone. But you know what? It's been an absolute pleasure sitting here with Mr. Vernon Grant and Mr. John sitting as well. Remember, get that book. Pre-order that book. VGTips.co.uk is where you can do it. And the name of the book is The Real Sits. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. But hey, right, getting your horse racing and football betting tips from VGTips.co.uk is not a dangerous thing. And neither is pre-ordering that book. www.pitchtalk pitch-talk.com is the official website facebook.com forward slash pitch talk become a fan become a friend become a member of the group join the footballing revolution we are working so hard to create myspace.com forward slash pitch talk pitch talk.blogspot.com or .co.uk will get you to the blogs blogs by yours truly straight shooting lj the g-man jesse fizzle russ Vernon, mike Harneman, big t aka thomas hewitt dave me aka mercy 
at, on, at Missy on Twitter and many, many more. Also, youtube.com forward slash Pitch Talk for all the videos, including the Pitch Talk Meet series, Pitch Talk at the Cup Finals, and much, much more in terms of original video content. All good. All good. You know, also, twitter.com forward slash Pitch Talk or at Pitch Talk on Twitter. Tweet with us, follow us, see what we're up to. 07535804466 is the mobile number. Call us, text us, let us know your views just like Big T did earlier in the show. And Pitch Talk one on Skype. We're also Pitch Talk live on Google Plus too. We've had a lot of fun. We've had a lot of fun. And we got to say, we got to say, it is we the people. For the people, for the people. Well, that one's got to love it. Got to love it. Big shout out to Motivate Sports and Fitness, Finn White Line Magazine as well, and also Girls on the Ball. And also a big shout out to the Skypers too. Yeah. Tom Wood, Mike Harneman, Jamie Bailey, Ross Vernon, Wayne Tuman was with us earlier in the show as well. Big shout out to the Skypers. Thank you for your opinions. Thank you for your questions. I've been straight shooting LJ. And I've been the G Man. And as always, I've been Jesse Fizzle. And we've had in the studio. Van Grant. Yours truly, the Sits. <laughs> the real thing. The real thing. <laughs> Go love it. We gotta say thank you very much. Good, Good night. night.